Farm. It's time to take a look at the big guns in the yard. This is the Victory Stakes, run over 1,200 metres for the seasoned sprinters. Rothfire, local star, is your favourite here at $1.95. Vega 1 is the horse we're going to look at here. Group 1 winner last preparation. Can't help it. Yeah. Think that he's going to run well. Have a look at him. He, Stunning. He's walking out beautifully. He's fit. But the support is for Rothfire. Good sign. First up off this break. Well, so, I mean, he couldn't have trialled any better. Um, we know he's over. Right to go. The gates open racing. Scalopini and also beginning sweetly. There was Baller. Rothfire's going forward. And also, it's me right up there as well. Nick and Nova's rolling forward. Handy is a count to Rupee. And also, Sharkero, Wild Planet, Jamea. Further back to Ranch Hand, Star Tontes. And Vega won the outsides. Last of all, so Rothfire's worked his way to the lead. Led by a length and a half. Second is it's me up into third. Nick and Nova. Fourth here to Scalopini. Lapini, 50 outside baller. And then we've got Sharkero, count to Rupee. Further back to Wild Planet, who's got about seven or eight lengths to make up at the 600 metres marker. Jamea, the outside. Third last is Ranch Hanstar. Tonte, second last, the inside. And Vega One's a length and a half away. Rothfire at the 450. In front from second is It's Me, Nick and Nova. Scalapini, the inside, count to Rupee. Baller working home, and Jamea's down the outside. It's Rothfire just with the lead from the outside, Scalapini. And further back to Baller. And Jamea's coming down the outside. And Count to Rupee weaving through as well. Scalapini's grabbed the lead. Count to Rupee the inside. Flashing home late. Jamea. Scalapini. Count to Rupee. Other two. Count to Rupee. Count to Rupee's one from Scalapini. Jamea. Star Tontas. Rothfire. Then Wild Planet. Nick and Nova. Ranch and Shakero. Vega one. Baller. It's me. Pulled up at the rear. <laughs> Well, Count de Rupi has come through inside of Scalopini over the last 100 metres and has got up in the hand. you here today, or one of, this is the Queensland Guineas, race seven on the card here at Eagle Farm. Run over the mile, and the favourite here is Ben the Knee at $4. But uh, that... One run, third, six runs, fourth. As I was saying, Mr Gately, the Queensland Guineas, one of the features today at Group 2 grade for $350,000. And Ben the Knee should be cherry ripe here, third run back. Yeah, they sets racing. And Ben the Knee began sweetly. Coast Watch is going forward. White Water's up into third. Red Wave, and there's Ashgrove driving through the field as well. Handiest Festival Dancer and character back nearer the inside. See Ripple Manazzi. Further back is a length and a half away. So White Water from Festival Dancer. Third Red Wave, fourth Ashgrove, fifth the outside Coast Watch. And then character Ben the Knee. Manazzi, See Ripple, Dark Destroyer, Cape Breton. Third last back nearer the outside is Antonio Giovanni from Southern Stock and also Kipling's Journey at the 500 metres marker. Festival Dancer is alongside Whitewater in the lead. Third is now Ashgrove and Red Waves on the outside. Coast Watch about to be called upon. Back near the inside is Character. Manazzi's working home and Bend the Knee coming as well but here's Coast Watch out wide. Bursting through Character. Coast Watching Character. Coming home late is Dark Destroyer but Character broke clear. Dark Destroyer's making ground. It's Character from Dark Destroyer, characters in front and character. Characters one from Dark Destroyer. Third Ashgrove, I think, on the peg from Coast Watch and Cape Breton. Then Southern Stock Manazzi, Red Wave, followed for the back by Kipling's Journey, Festival Dancer, Antonio Giovanni, Ben the Knee dropped out in the end, and Whitewater pulling up at the rear. Well, a bit of class coming to the top there with character. A Group 2 winner a couple of starts ago. Gets up. Much better run there by Dark Destroyer. Coast Watch number one. 2, 4, 12 and 1 in the Queensland Guineas. And uh, there was some terrific form to come out of this race 12 months ago. And it's likely that uh, there's going to be... Yes, let's have a look at the market for the big one. The Group 1 Grand Syndicate's Australasian Oaks. And my whisper is the clear favourite at $2.70. Jamie car riding for Peter and Paul Snowden. Daisy's the second pick at $9. So you see there's been a good move there. She's into nine. He's now slipped down to $15. Just above her, Glint of Hope at 14 and Dussur at eight. And racing in the Australasian Oaks.
Best away, Ancient Girl. My Whisper stepped faultlessly. She's in second position. Speed from wide around. Barb Raider and Stray moving across. Do Sir. When they head to the back, 1,800 metres to run. Ancient Girl got the lead as most predict tail end of the field inside the 800. And the leader is Ancient Girl doing it well. Two lengths. Barb Raider's got the sit for Williams in second. Stray third. My Whisper's had no excuses on the rail. Fourth. Do Sir moving closer. So to Glit of Hope sneaking through the rail. Then Bonds of Pearl are route. So you see Fortunate Kiss. The rest have got a fair bit to do, including Mac and Cheese, Mamunia and Morissette. Daisies comes to the outside. They spread up. Ancient Girl, Glit of Hope got a charm run through and dashed hard to take the lead. Barb Raider matching the stride. Glit of Hope from Barb Raider. They shook off Ancient Girl. Now My Whisper called upon. My Whisper starting to lengthen after Barb Raider and Glit of Hope. Glit of Hope in front from Barb Raider. Barb Raider, Glit of Hope, Glit of Hope. The daughter of Deep Impact wins the Australasian Oaks. Glit of Hope from Barb Raider and My Whisper. Then Bonds of Perla. Do Sir Daisies from the back. So you see, next home was Morissette. Followed by Bundles of Fun, Fortunate Kiss, Mamunia. Ancient Girl tired out halfway down the stretch. Then Daisy, Stray, Roots and Mac and Cheese. Trent Bussenden and Natalie Young team up with Daniel Moore. Glint of Hope wins the Group 1 Australasian Oaks. Barb Raider tried hard. My Whisper charging late. All honours with Glint of Hope. We've got to head to Horsh. Uh, here they are. We, we picked them up. Uh, Glint of Hope defeating Barb Raider and the Snowdens. My Whisper. Hard to take the lead. Barb Raider matching the stride. Glint of Hope from Barb Raider. They shook off Ancient Girl. Now My Whisper called upon. My Whisper starting to lead and after Barb Raider and Glint of Hope. Glint of Hope in front from Barb Raider. Barb Raider, Glint of Hope, Glint of Hope. The daughter of Deep Impact wins the Australasian Oaks. Glint of Hope from Barb Raider. And... All right, now uh, let's uh, go back to uh, on that. So uh, let's go to uh, Adelaide. Uh, Ron Dovers, he's back next uh, week. He did send a message straight through. Play this on the show tomorrow. Golden Eagle horse. Uh, a horse called Elation in those... Uh, Ingham Colours, one of the sets of the Ingham Colours which Greg Ingham uses now. Watch this. Alation charging through on the inside. The Colt quickly sprinted to the lead. Alation opening up a big space over Star of Chaos, then Perceptive and Defining. But have a look at this boy go. Alation, long may he play. He bolts up in the Nitschke by four lengths. Defining grab second. Star of Chaos, Perceptive. Now, Harry. that's two out of two for Alation. Mm. Two out of two. Three-year-old would be rising four. What have we got there? Looks like a pretty special talent, doesn't he? He was just impressive on debut. Yeah. Uh, yeah, when he broke his maiden. So, sky's the limit. I don't know what they've got in mind, but I think every race is going to be thrown yeah, around. It'll be big. Yeah. <laughs> Duff's Duff just throw it. And away they go. Cool jumped away pretty well. Rightio Pal was away fast with Flying Sultan. Not too far away out deeper on the course is Hanam. And over on the far side, Star Patrol is showing speed as well. And not far away, Savvy Sovereign. After 2.50, Rightio Pal is the leader from Cooled and Flying Sultan in the black jacket from Star Patrol. Savvy Sovereign all about Eve. Then class of all. Onto the course proper, 600 metres to go. Star Patrol drives up to just about match Rightio Pal with Cool between them and Flying Sultan almost four across the track by a length and a half. Savvy Sovereign all about even corkscrew. Back behind them, Hanam. Squid Game has a bit of a wall in front of it at the moment and got uh, chopped, up, chopped out for a run at that stage. And behind them, Cardinal Gem as Star Patrol went for home. 200 metres to go. Race clear. Three, four links in front from Savvy Sovereign. They were followed by Radio Pell. Squid Game when it's over. Have a look at this go. Star Patrol has blasted away and won by nearly six. Seven. What a win. Second on the inside, Savvy Sovereign from Cardinal Gem and then Radio Pell and Squid Game. Hanam behind them. Gene, what a performance. Star Patrol, Brett Preble for Clint McDonald at 9.20 and 2.70. And that's one of the biggest winning margins we've seen at Flemington for a long time in a sprint race. That's Espiona type stuff from uh, the Spring Carnival. Star Patrol has absolutely trotted in. $9.20 and 270 
And the race time we uh, will... 108.84 looks very, very slick, if that's correct. Uh, I was lucky enough to get him. I've got to give a big thanks uh, to Shane McGrath. Uh, he recommended me uh, taking these horses over. It's $2.50, 11 in for fourth. Blondo is the winner of the takeover target. Yeah, he's a pattern trainer, Chris Waller. Back to Aquas Park for the feature of the day, the Hollandale Stakes over 1,800 metres at Group 2 level. We're hoping to, to see another... Um... Yes, uh, he's marching around the yard, looking in great order. It's been a month since he ran second in the Queen Elizabeth at Randwick. Only overhaul very late by solid support for him. He was given a lovely ride by Jamie Carr up on the speed. Beat Streets of Avalon, who had a lot more weight. Lots of ifs and buts about him today. We know he's a quality horse, but he is budgers here. Yeah. And they look, he's so tough, Bernie. And he and they made him the danger. 12 Polly Grays flying on these wet tracks. And nine, Hutor was terrific first up. So one, three, 12 and nine. Zaki Fape racing. Zaki was away well with Coventina Bay. Dashing Willoughby the inside. Rolling forward is also Hail Manhattan. Polly Gray right up there. And Ayrton's trapped out four and five wide, but coming over from out wide. So Zaki and Hail Manhattan the first couple here. Third the inside, Polly Gray. And Ayrton's up to fourth the outside, but Zaki has repelled the early challenge of Hail Manhattan. He's got the lead by a length and a half. Third is... Third is Ed Hollandale Stakes filled in, so Zaki by length and a half. Second is Anton. Third is Hal Manhattan. Fourth is Polly Gray. Fifth the inside, Coventina Bay. And then coming Cook Aracha. Further back to Dashing Willoughby. Next over on the outside is Zaydani. And the final three remain Wet Door and company there with Colding. And Hungry Harder still last of all. Nine or ten lengths off the speed. So Zaki down the side by a neat length from Anton. Third is Hal Manhattan. Fourth the outside is Polly Gray. A length and a half to Coventina Bay. Kukaracha is over on the outside. Further back to Dashing Willoughby not travelling well. Zaydani creeping forward. Wet all between them. Second last is Colding back nearer the outside there. And last of all is a Hungry Heart at the 550 metre marker. So Zaki by a neck from second is Ant and Polly Gray's up to third. Fourth back nearer the inside there is Coventina Bay creeping forward as Kukaracha. Hal Manhattan's gone. Wet all back nearer the inside and further back to Zaydani at the 350. At Zaki in front by a length and a half. Working home as Cucaracha down the outside. Coventina Bay, Polly Gray, Wetor making ground as well at the furlong marker. It's Zaki in front by a length and a half. Trying hard as Cucaracha. Polly Gray the next one, but in front Zaki near the line from Polly Gray. Zaki's in front. Zaki's done it again. Zaki by three quarters. Second Polly Gray, third Cucaracha, followed from the back by Wetor. Then coming Coventina Bay. And back behind those was Hungry Heart, Zaydani Ayrton, followed from the back by Dashing Willoughby. And then we had Colding towards the rear and how Manhattan has finished last of all. Well, he's the pin-up boy in Australian racing, this fellow Zaki. He's second AD Hollandale Cup in different styles. Wide last year, but today leading every step of the way. What about the run of the grey, Polly Gray? She's got within three quarters of a length of him. Kukaracha was gallant, eight of the coast yesterday. The AD Hollandale stakes over 1,800 metres. And Zaki was expected to go to the lead and win, and he didn't let his supporters down. But in front, Zaki near the line from Polly Gray. Zaki's in front. Zaki in done it again. Zaki by three quarters. Second, Polly Gray. Third, Kukaracha. Although the margin was fairly narrow, I thought the runner-up was quite good there, Polly Gray. She really relished those track conditions, and Zaki was getting a little bit tired towards the end. In fact, going out onto the track when he was going through them, Hugh Bowman applied pressure as far out as at about the 650 metres mark. So, for Zaki to kick and win like that is testimony to his courage, and he heads towards the, the Doombin Cup again in two weeks' time. So that was... Yeah, back into 460. Behemoth is six out to seven. Dexalation seven and solid. There was good support on the tab fix for Asar resuming from a break, Gator. And with the bookmakers, went up shorter at 950. Still specced into nine dollars. Yeah, look, he was beaten about four lengths first up from me and many others, so that's a little query here, but um, his best is good enough. For those chasing a real roughie, free of debts with bookies, is 41 into $26 as it resumes, and it's got an okay record here at Morfordville. Morfordville. Yeah, look, I've got him fifth pick. I didn't think he's out of it at all. He's, he's got a good fresh record to show. He plays well at home. Uh...
and racing. Perfect dispatch, but Bohemoth hasn't got any real gate speed. Savatu XL on the other hand, fired out and will look to cross, free of debt. Azar goes through to third. Aston Rapova, Bo Rossa and Miss Albania not far away. Then Dexalation Ironclad a little bit deep. Behemoth is through to fourth last, followed by the Inferno. Shimino second last and Outlaws Revenge last of all. Savatu XL joined by Azar as they head to the 600 metres. Third position, Bo Rossa. Aston Rapova can't get on the track. Free of debt, leaders back. Dexalation Ironclad, Miss Albania. Behemoth spots them. Six with the Inferno. Shimino hugs the rail. Last of all, Outlaws Revenge. Pressuring now Azar to Savatu XL and Azar takes over. Savatu XL sprints sharply to match. Free of debt. Miss Albania not much doing from the back of the field. Bo Ross is not there. Neither is Ironclad or Bohemoth. Savatu XL free of debt's after him. Azar hangs around the Inferno late. Screaming finish. Free of debt lunged at Savatu XL. Very tight. Azar between them. The Inferno wider out. Then Miss Albania. Behemoth got going late. Followed by Ironclad, Shimino, Outlaws Revenge, Dexalation, Aston Rapova and Bo Ross is near the rear. Looks like the eight might nail the two, and that's free of debt, nailing Sabah to excel. But we do need the judge to confirm. And then it's close for third and hard to line up. Asar number seven and the Inferno number three. But it will go to free of debt. And as we talked about pre-race, was being back to the price, Skoda. Yeah, look, I, I thought he was a good roughy. I just been a, um, in some class horses. Sabah to excel prominent in the photo. I thought the Inferno might be uh, able to claim the, the 100 metre mark but it's, it's certainly prominent too. I think Sabah to excel runs second. He's ahead of the feature of the afternoon, the Group 1 Robert Sengster at Morfordville. The channel aid for the Group 1 Robert Sengster. Thank you, Nigel. Yes, it's the big one, and runners are just going onto the track here. Let's have a look at the market for the Robert Sangster in September run. Is the favourite $4.20 with sports bet. Bella Nipotina at 12. The defending champion, Instant Celebrity at 16, and Snap Dancer at $17. Come on, ready. Racing. Good start by most. Shalo out the back quickly. Wide out, snap dancer, all banter. Champagne dreams all began in a hurry. Bella Vella, away game, not far away when they settle into stride with Bella Nipotina. So you assume. Then another award. Brooklyn Hustle worse than midfield, deep on the outside of Heresy, September run. Then instant celebrity, fourth last, alongside of Argetia, Shalo and Gaze Gree, last of all. Snap dancer, able to cross at the 600. Leads from all banter. Banter. Three quarters away, Bella Vella, away game, Champagne Dreams, then so you assume, another award, Bella Nipotina, Brooklyn Hustles coming deep with instant celebrity, uh, Jenny is on their back, Gaze Grease, September run, Williams riding for luck, so too Oliver on Heresy, last of all, Shalo, they spin the bend, Snap Dancer straightened in front, a couple on all banter, away game, another award, September run charging through the fence, Bella Vella, Champagne Dreams, then Bella Nipotina, but Snap Dancer in full flight, a Away game into the clear. Away game chasing Snap Dancer. Snap Dancer kept going at any old price. And Snap Dancer takes out the Sangster all the way from away game. September run through to run third. Ahead of either Bella Nipotina, another award, and Brooklyn Hustle. Then Argentia, Shalo, Instant Celebrity, All Banter, Heresy, Champagne Dreams, Bella Vella, followed by So You Assume and Gaze Gree. Snap Dancer takes out the Group 1. Robert Sanks, the stakes for the Kieran Mande of Eustace team, and they've quinelled the race with a way game. She just ran away with it, JJ. Oh, she crossed it from a wide gate. Her first 150 metres was blinding speed. I mean, I thought she'd be fought. I didn't think she'd just cross them on her ear like that. And, and she was always in a good rhythm. He didn't try and slow her down, just sort of let her roll at the, the tempo she was happy to be at. And coming for home, she, he probably eased one or two off the fence, uh, and she had a massive kick, and they were never really going to get her. Halfway down the stretch, it was pretty obvious that the race was was only for the miners and she's uh, she's held that margin really well away game had its chance was in the right spot has run well in second spot September run probably a little bit further back than they would have liked worked home nicely in, into third beating enough hey it just keeps getting better here's snap dancer 
and away game beating September run. Through the fence, Bella Vella, Champagne Dreams, then Bella Nipotina, but Snap Dancer in full flight. Away game into the clear. Away game chasing Snap Dancer. Snap Dancer kept going at any old price. And Snap Dancer takes out the Sangster all the way from away game. September run through to run third. Ahead of either Bella Nipotina and no stopping Curly. No. No stopping him. No, we know she's a good man. She won the Triscay and she's good fresh and boy, they just let her coast across from that outside barrier and, and another one dictate turns up the fence one two three all travel on the rail whether I, don't, I didn't get a chance to study all those races from Adelaide yesterday but it, uh, that race looked pretty biased to me but another reward was the only one to make ground probably out a little bit a heavy eight so keep that in mind this is a group three and of course these horses are pretty much all en route uh, to either the derby or the lone filly perhaps even uh, the oaks so top weight and favorite is character from the james cummings stable they've taken the blinkers off today maxi james Let's have a detailed look at the tab fixed on the rough habit plate character 280 out to 340 now verona's the second pick 460 just a 480 back to 460 really solid dark destroyer gets out by a dollar in the trade from 650 to 750 a couple of Sing now, Antonio Giovanni dawdled out. Uh, we had Dark Rebel beginning sweetly. Satirical Glory going forward and Ruar kicking up the inside. Impel Gazelle four wide. Ascro five wide there. Bell Morris further back. Verona three deep and then character. Um, Anazi Southern Stocker drifted back with last of all the best part of 12 or 14 lengths off the leader which remains Satirical Glory by length and a quarter. Seconds Ascrove and third now is Impel Gazelle back nearer the inside. Manazzi is now going four for Brooker three wide and then we've got Bell Morris on the way forward as well making ground there. Uh, with also Ruark back near the inside. Just in behind those is Verona and uh, next back near the inside is Character there. And then we've got Antonio Giovanni, Paternal. Dark Destroyer is going forward out deeper on the track there and Tutakaka is about three lengths away last of all. So it's still satirical glory here from a Nazi. Ashgrove third, the inside. And they're clear at the moment as they approach the home turn. Impel Gazelle, Character is going forward. Dark Destroyer is on the way forward as well. Verona further back as they approach the home turn Southern Stock and then we've got uh, the next one there which is Antonio Giovanni and Bell Morris back behind those in the swing around the home turn Satirical Glory um, out three wide there coming into it now is uh, Manazzi and also Dark Destroyer coming home strongly further back to Southern Stock and Ashgrove Impel Gazelle then Verona and Lake Paternal's making ground the inside Dark Destroyer's the leader Ashgrove a length and a half away Lake Paternal the inside Dark Destroyer Paternal Paternal, Dark Destroyer's in front. Paternal the inside. Dark Destroyer, Paternal. Paternal the inside driving a Dark Destroyer. Dark Destroyer, Paternal to hit the line. Dark Destroyer has uh, held off to win, has held on to win from second. Paternal, uh, not sure third. Manasi or Southern Stock followed for the back by Tutakaka. And then we had Impel Gazelle, Verona, Bell Morrison, Dark Rebel, Ashgrove, Satirical Glory Character, Antonio Giovanni and Ruark has pulled up short up the rear. So the Kiwis win the rough habit with Dark Destroyer at his third run here in Australia. Has beaten Paternal, who rallied on the rails. Manazzi has run... Tab, race eight on the card here today at Eagle Farm. Eduardo led all the way to win last year's at Doomben. Different kettle of fish this year, Maxi. Yes, uh, at Eagle Farm, so it's no place for the faint heart of that last 100 metres, but terrific lineup this year, and things have changed a little bit with Tari. He looks like magic. James Cummings, Nashville Willer. Everything looks good, Paul, for him. He looks fantastic. All right, let's look at the favourite, Marzu, Peter and Paul Snowden, Sammy Clipperton. I thought on a good four, soft five, he might have been a a little bit of a risk, Paul, but his, his wet track form is just exemplary. It is, and just the way the track's playing is perfect for him. You've got a couple of obvious softies good yeah. enough, mm. and now we're drifted into the heavy, so uh, my confidence is dropping away with him. However, he's so genuine. Beatable, you know, now that the track's downgraded, I think it's advantage him. Uh, of the others, Paul Alley uh, is certainly in the game, but another one who probably didn't love the downgrade. So um, I've tipped 13, 10, 14 and 9. And best backed on the tab fix, on the tab fix as we've touched on, on Trivier, $11 into $7. Let's have a look at what's happening with the bookmakers. Marzu, $2.40 out to $2.80. And on Trivier... They looked in the yard. Marzu is still... Why there, I should say. And attendance in racing. Vega won away brilliantly. But also Paul Laley, handy as well there as Menhaj and Rothfire's going forward. 
and also Zoo Style is carving over from out wide. So Zoo Style over on the outside of Generation going forward. Back to third now is Rothfire back nearer the inside as they swing down the side of Marzur's right there is fourth. Further back to Powell Lely. They're clear from Kemantari. And then coming Minhaj and Vega one. Alpine Edge baller. Signore Fox Isotope, tape. And on Triviera's last of all. So Zoo Style by length and a half. Second generation. Third Rothfire. Fourth the outside Marzu. A length and a half to Powell Lely. Vega one. Further back to Minhaj and count to Rupi. Kemantari baller. Alpine Edge. Signore Fox on Trivier. And Isotope is last of all at Zoo Style at the 350. About three lengths in front here from Generation. Marzu the outside. Rothfire is making ground back nearer the rails. And Powell Lely is coming down the outside. Zoo Style in front. Working home is Marzu. And Powell Lely down the outside. Made as Rothfire. Marzu the leader. Powell Lely the outside. On Trivier coming home late as well. But Marzu is in front from Powell Lely. Marzu. Powell Lely. Marzu. Marzu has won the 10,000 from Powell Lely. On Trivier followed by Senor Fox. Rothfire, Alpine Edge, Baller, Kamantari, Zoo Style, Isotope Generation, Count the Rupee, Vega One, Minhaj at the rear. First group one since his door. Well, Marzu beats Palele, the three year olds fighting it out. And what about the run of the Kiwi Mare on Trevier storming on the outside? And those three horses really got away from them. Zoo Style got over easily, gave a really good kick, but he was throwing out. Uh, signals that he was under a lot of pressure at the 200, Paul, and you can see the three-year-olds starting their launch. Well, we well, it was graduation day there yesterday for Marzu. After the gelding operation, he just keeps on winning, and he wins a Group 1 Doom and 10,000 for the Snowdens and Sam Clippard. And Bernadette Cooper was there heading up our coverage. In Shining because we thought, you know, we would absolutely no chance of running that meeting at Doombin. So um, the track was incredible under those circumstances, and complete and utterly unique although we did get to a heavy eight by the time we got to the 10,000 it was uh, different and I guess these back markers really struggled to stay in touch in the middle section and that's why these two three-year-olds were there to fight out the finish um, Jonka stopping there just caused Marzu to shift out a little bit there was a minimal brush James McDonald uh, did look at the stewards vision just made me think of how far we've come in the last 20 uh, 20 years Years because he came, but these two th three girls were the dominant force on trivia. Obviously, right on the outside, they're flying home late and a, a great run going forward. But yeah, it was great to see the hype. You know, we got the um, um, to think that you know you could race on a heavy track like that, and and there's nowhere else we could. Doombin would have been, Ross said Doombin would have been a heavy 12 to 15. He can't even get the mower out on uh, Doombin. Uh, everything's starting to smell like mower. Very, very. He really wasn't sure on the surface. It's a different heavy track, as it's as well documented. But yeah, I just tried to pick him up as best I could and get him as far down the straight on the bridle sort of thing. The old hunt and hold. His calibre. James McDonald Pulele. Yeah, he was brave. He was, um, he didn't, wasn't suited by the ground at all. Uh, from the 600, I thought we were in a world of pain, but he's, to his credit, he dug deep. He really surged when he had to, obviously, to come up short. It was a little bit disappointing, but he did, was very brave. He's telling us that. I thought four hop on Harry and five residue, two of the locals, both had excellent place chances in good stables and both drawn. Yeah, well, uh, Elation is on top for me. I thought he looked absolutely outstanding in the yard. There's a lot of quality about him, Mick, and uh, exciting to bring a horse like this to the races. Yeah, it is. We're just trying to build a rating for him, you know. Uh, Adelaide Guineas will help. We're just trying to build a rating for him, you know. Uh, Adelaide Guineas will help. He's a 78 rater at the moment. So I think to get into the uh, Golden Eagle, you need to be... Uh, sort of mid 80 somewhere thereabouts. So. 1600 metres. Elation is the hot pot for the Guineas. And they're racing. Elation stepped away perfectly, not being hustled and bustled for any real forward spot. Ballynora, Vino, De Casa Nostra both rolling forward. Mgawa, Prince Joffre, Tavi Cat, Ritaliro's holding a prominent spot. So a few of these at a big price. They want to get forward. They want to get in front of the favourite Elation, who's back to worse than midfield on the inside of Ben's Baron. Last of all, they race up to the 600 metres in the Adelaide Guineas, and the leader is Tavi Cat. Tavi
Heavy Cat by three quarters to Prince Joffre. Hop on Harry. Moving closer is Ben's Baron Ballinora. Now Alation's left the rail. Vino de Casanostra in front of him starting to feel pressure and he's angling for a run with Ritaliro. Residue and Umgawa gets to the outside. Alation being put back in his place. He has to change course but it hasn't halted his momentum. He's building up the revs quickly. Raced up to Hop on Harry. Then Residue, Ritaliro and Umgawa but Alation hitting top gear from Hop on Harry and Residue and Alation's too good in the Adelaide Guineas. Three from three. Alation by a length to Hop on Harry. Residue, Umgawa, Ritaliro, then flight deck, last girl love. A long... Didn't really go to plan for Alation. Maybe a few nervous moments, but in the end, he remains unbeaten. His second stakes win from three starts and Hunter's breather, a collective sigh of relief. He comes away for a comfortable win under Mark under Mark Zara, Ngawa and Residue. He's a golden eagle horse, elation, black colours. Yeah, he's, and it wasn't hard to find, I think everyone found him, yeah. but he he was good again, he wasn't as brilliant as last time, but he, he's still raw and he's, he had to bump out and then got shoved back in and he still pins his ears back and gets the job done. Like the um, second horse had, was the horse behind him last time, third horse had form around the derby winner, so it's, it wasn't a, it's a strong enough race. Look at the regard he's holding now. Wow. Mo Alation Mars there you go. There you go. Mm. So, and I think he... Next generation of work. We'll start with Allegron. He's been favourite all week. Damien Oliver and James Cummings teaming up. He's just been displaced, though, Terry. Yeah, absolutely. He's holding his spot in the market. He hasn't really drifted too much. They've had to push him out just a little bit, a little bit because of this, you know, swell of support for Detonated Jack. But I just think he, he's got the form on the board, on the board, placed in the derby, both in... Victoria and Sydney winning the St. Ledger last. Yes. Well, this has been well backed. It's almost into single figure odds, uh, JT. This is probably the best back runner now, away from runner now, away from detonated Jack. Clip round the train. Excellent day, Monad Race. A highlight on the calendar. Who wins the derby? Well, I've been bullish, as you know, JT, all week about Allegron. So I'm with Allegron. 320 sports bet. Racing in the derby. And Allegron jumped away nicely. He's racing quite forward through the first 100 metres. Pushing forward deeper out is King of Pharaohs and Son of Emperor the Widerest with brilliant speed is looking to cross. Son of Emperor Clade Moore and King of Pharaohs. They're the first three as they head out of the stretch. Texas T gets to fourth position on the outside of Commander Harry and then Harley moving straight into one by two cover. On the outside of Allegron, a half away to the nephew. Dean lengths off the lead as they work to the side inside the 1200 metres and the leader son of emperor running them along by a half a length Claydemore creeping closer with the sit on the pair is king of pharaohs they're four lengths in front of texas t at the thousand two further back now harley moving on the outside of commander harry then saint tropez allegron hemmed away on the rail followed by the nephew fear the x gets moving sebastian the fox lady chart water into wine then jungle magnate yaffer Last of all, still detonated Jack, but the field is becoming more compact with 650 metres to run. And Claydemore took over, son of Emperor falling back through the field. Claydemore now joined by Fear the X. The runs are coming from down back. Uh, also starting to move into it, Harley moving. Right around them is Jungle Magnate. Detonated Jack Allegron's held up. They swing into the straight and Jungle Magnate with a lightning turn of speed. Quickly race to the lead. The nephew's out after him. Then Detonated Jack. Jack and Yaffet, there's no Allegron. It's Jungle Magnate clear. Detonator Jack's got a lift. Jungle Magnate kept going for Zara. Clear from Yaffet and Detonator Jack and Jungle Magnate. What a win this will be. Takes the chairmans and now the derby. Two links to Yaffet and Detonator Jack. Allegron fourth. Fear the X and then the nephew. A long gap away to Lady Chart. Harley Move and Texas T. King of Pharaohs, Clade Moore. Then Sebastian the Fox. Commander Harry, further back, Santro Pay, water into wine, and son of Emperor. Well, jungle, jungle Magnate comes of age in Adelaide. Mick Price and Michael Kent team up with Mark Zara, and he wins the derby. The son of Tarzino, obviously. Mick trained this horse, Jane, to uh, success in a derby himself. 
and I'm tipping that's going to mean. I'll yep, and a strong win. Another one with this Mick uh, Price and Michael Kent's team are absolutely airborne. They won the two features yesterday, and this is another one, Jungle Magnate, who was a very tough win. He's um, he come out of the chairmans to win this race. Uh, Yafet went good. The month between runs for detonator Jack had a lot to do. He had no luck at all, the favourite. And he ran into plenty of rump stakes there throughout the race, Allegron, and uh, had excuses. OK, now... Patrick Carberry. So to find a, a back... Any more than what we saw at Flemington last time. To the eye, I thought, how good this thing? Went back and looked at the clock. Now, what he's done is run a similar first 600 to B Hunter later in the day. He would have beaten that horse by six or seven lengths had the races been run together. Uh, look, I would have given him some hope in a Goodwood today. Uh, he, look, he's got to do it again. A long-term view for this horse, and he's going to keep him comfortable and keep him learning. But I'd have backed him in a Goodwood off what he produced last time out. Same chase, perhaps, the black type of Cornwalls and other races at three that you can bide your time and let them mature naturally. We're going to see if that's the case here with Star Patrol as we go to Matt Hill. Double next set, ready, and away they go. Crystal bound away cleanly. Star Patrol towards the outside, middle of the line out. Over on the far side, Capital Rain is towards the course proper. 550 metres to go. It's Capital Rain being cuddled by Oliver. In the middle of the track, it's outback action with Star Patrol who's looming up on the outside and they've sprinted away. Followed by Crystal bound, Scissor Step and Trey Porty. Star Patrol. Preble gets busy now on the outside of outback action and they're stride for stride with Star Patrol getting about a neck in front of outback action who won't go away star patrol without back action three quarters a length away star patrol is forging on Trey Porty late but star patrol too good up the straight again star patrol a length and three quarters Trey Porty and out back action they were followed by Bifrost in a photo for fourth with scissors well certainly not the margin that we've seen from him in his Packenham victory and then obviously that devastating performance here on Anzac Day but a win nonetheless and another step in the progression of Star Patrol. Some real talent under the urgings of Brett Preble, who was able to see off the challenge from outback. Harry McAuliffe and the team at Morphville for the feature of the afternoon, the Goodwood. Thank you, Nigel. Yes, our fourth and final Group 1 of the Adelaide Autumn Racing Carnival. It's the Furphy Goodwood. Extreme Warrior is the favourite at $4.80 with Sportsbet. Behemoth at $8, the Inferno $8, her, General Bow at $17, and Lombardo at $18. We got a chance of getting back to that figure he did in the Blue Sapphire, and that is good enough to, to win the race. So 21, 8, 1, and 19, but it's a great race. He's bright, he's got his ears bored. I've never seen. Murphy Goodwood. And racing now. Behemoth a little slow to get going with not an option and Hal Vorson and Frankie Pino's gone back. Bella Nipotina came out running. Lombardo, Bo Rossa, Sava to excel. Not far away, Extreme Warrior with the Astrologist and then Azar, free of debt. Outlaws Revenge, very deep on the course is Instant Celebrity. Outlaws Revenge is out there as well. Then came the Inferno, regards Marie worse than midfield. Then Ironclad, Hal Vorson, Manhattan times has got well back in the field and so too Frankie Pino big behemoth is back third and fourth last as they sweep up to the bend where the leader now is Lombardo cruising for home it's Lombardo turning in front from Bo Rossa just in behind them as they sweep into the stretch the astrologist then Bella Nipotina Savit to excel free of deck gets to the outside General Bo starting to wind up from back and so too behemoth the leader Lombardo Bella Nipotina behemoth climbing up the astrologist then further back to not an option. Lombardo kept going in the Goodwood from Hal Vorson and Frankie Pino. Lombardo, he's unbeatable here at Morfordville. Five out of five and he takes the group one. Hal Vorson, Frankie Pino from last, might have pinched third in front of the astrologist Bella Nipotina. Then not an option from Behemoth, Savit to excel. Regards Marie. Further back, Azar, Bo Rossa, the Inferno. Then Extreme Warrior, Instant Celebrity. Manhattan Times never really got into the hunt with Outlaws Revenge, Ironclad, and free of debt, one of the last. What an unbelievable...
unbelievable carnival for Mick Price and Michael Kent Jr. They just continue to win. And Lombardo, James, geez, he's found a home here at Moore Football. He, he loves it. He ought to move here full time, Lombardo. He can't get enough of the state. But uh, look, he went to the front. There wasn't that much pressure. Uh, I thought this might be one from the front. And look, Zach Spain, he's come over here. He probably thought. Can't win down the straight. I saddled him up in Melbourne. Um, I don't know. He just might, might be, uh, I don't know, adrenalised by a trip away. I had to saddle him up. It was like saddling up a big bear, you know. He stood on me, shat on me. Bloody. <laughs> Yeah, he was just booming, ready to go, you know, and I just said to Zach, being a, a sort of apprentice, and um, he's a very good kid, very good hard worker, and uh, I, I was glad that he was able to maintain his association with the horse. Very good for him. You tested this horse in a Group 1 earlier. He ran in the Manicato at Mooney Valley. Did you think you could win a Group 1 with this horse? No. But he deserves his chance, and when your rating goes up, a ladder, so... He deserves his chance, and uh, look, Kathy Haynes bred him, and she's bred some nice, tough horses. And what can I say? You know, you've got to run them, give them their chance. And uh, when it drew poorly, grabs in the size produce stakes, 18 runners. One is Twin Stars for the McAvoy's. Nice horse, Adelaide form strong, winning the, the BRC size produce. Resonator Gators on top of five out to six. Exo Lady is eight dollars into six fifty, back to seven. Other moves include Twin Stars, twelve dollars into eight fifty. Uh, Brereton, two thousand and seventeen. Other winners include. Zoo Star, Shootout, Mahogany, Slight Chance, Red Anchor, and Tullock in 1957. BRC. Set now, the gates open, they're racing. Exo Lady was away brilliantly. Going forward is Resonator. Swiss Exile is right up there as well with Calgary and Stampede, Capital Tower, and also Merchant Prince and Mashani Warfare is going forward with also their Elude. And then Brereton, Coco Brew Express, She's a Belter, Robusto, Twin Stars, Liberty Steps, and Drifting Back fell well with victory moments over on the outside there clear from Ty Racer who gone back with also Grand Shadows over on the outside so Swiss Exile's got the lead second is Resonator, third is Exile Lady, fourth the outside is Mashani Warfare, Coco Brew Express up into fifth out three wide Eluders further back and then Calgary Stampede back nearer the inside trapped out Brereton further back to Capital Tower and also Merchant Prince back nearer the inside at the 550 and then we've got Robusto back in behind those shares the belt is out deeper. Twin Stars, Liberty Steps also fell well. Green Shadows right towards the outside. Tie race from Victory Moments inside the 400 metres marker. And Swiss Exiles clear up the moment. Second is Exile Lady. And then we've got Resonator, also Brereton. And She's a Belter runs home down the outside. Swiss Exiles are out three lengths in front. She's a Belter finishing strongly. Swiss Exiles in front. She's a Belter the outside. Swiss Exiles, She's a Belter. She's a Belter goes home the better. And She's a Belter one the sides from Swiss Exile, third Brereton, followed by Capital Tower, Twin Stars, Green Shadows, and Calgary Stampede, Robusto, back behind Resonator, Thelwell, Mashani, Warfare, Merchant Prince, and Delude has pulled up at the rear. The Perth Philly, number 17, she's a belter. Formerly with Justin Warwick, who's still in the ownership, transferred to the Snowdens. Didn't she come with a run down the outside? Number 17 will be in the frame as the winner of the group with a run down the outside. Number 17 will be in the frame as the winner of the group two size produce and Willie Pike. The, down the ground here on the dry and she lands a couple of good decent bets in her, in her own right because she was about 19 into about 15 late here. Swiss Exile, what a run. Currently on a former Perth Philly. Yeah, it was it was a perfect match, and uh, didn't these owners go crazy after she won? You know, she was really good at the Gold Coast. She was definitely on the worst part of the track there, but it's just this turn of foot she shows here inside the 200 metre mark, where she just puts them all to pay. I mean, Swiss Exile, he really he looked home, didn't he? And this is the advantage, I guess, of, of Eagle Farm. Um, Brereton was good; he was three deep, and I really liked Twin Stars back on the inside as well. Group 1, Doom and Cup here at Eagle Farm. Delayed a week, worth a million, 2,100 metres the journey. And here is Zaki for J-Mac and Annabelle Neesham. Yeah, well, he's, he hasn't got on the prance today, so it won't be long. Uh, but he's uh, staying nice, cool, calm and collected here th this afternoon. So, obviously, his record speaks for itself. He destroyed him in this race last year. He's very adaptable. He handles all conditions. And the thrill-seekers are, are happy to just keep chiming in now. He's $1.24. 
ball, and that could be value. Yeah, he is. There with Zaki, looking to defend the crown he won here last year, Mr. Gately. Yeah, it was some win last year. I'm not sure he can do that, but uh, he look, he probably meets an inferior field, and he was a good pacing. Zaki was away with Sweekly in company with Goncosi inside. Kukarata's going forward. Holly grows right up there. Zaki's up in the firing line. He's out three and four wide. He's up in search of the lead, though. So Polly Gray and Yonkers the inside. Zaki third and fourth there is Kukaracha. Maximal fifth the outside. And drifting back is Wet Torres. Tifini's out on a wide run. Then we've got the chosen one and also Coventry. So Polly Gray by three quarters to Zaki. And third there is Yonkers. And fourth over on the outside is Kukaracha. Fifth and three wide is Estefini. And then Wet Tor further back on the run to over on the outside is Maximal and then we've got the chosen one third last second last there is Coventina Bay and Great House a length and a half away so Polly Gray narrowly Zaki the outside only about half a head away up into third is Estefini followed along there by Yonkers back near the inside of Kukaracha and then we've got creeping forward now is Maximal and further back in the field too just in behind those horses there is the chosen one and also Great House and Coventina Bay passing the 450 and Polly Gray quickly tackled here by Zaki on the outside has taken over and further back in the field there to making ground as wet or the inside and then we've got Yonkers and working home as Maximal at Zaki just for the lead wet or the inside's out after Zaki Zaki wet or wet or's driven through and taken the lead away from Zaki late as Maximal but wet or's in front from Maximal flashing home too late wet or in a boil over wet or's one from Maximal not sure third up there was a chosen one Zaki weakened great house wide followed by Polly Gray and then we had Yonkers, Kukaracha, Estefini and Coventina Bay. A boil over in the Durban Cup. Zaki went pop and Wetor has won a Group 1 here in Australia. A newcomer to Peter and Paul Snowden in the last 12 months. He has climbed a mountain today. Karen McAvoy in the saddle will beat another import maximal. Wow, uh, no such thing as a sure thing, they say, and this is the new... Could this well be the, the new kid on the block? Wait for age today, back to a dry track. He's grazed um, and just picked him off one by one, but when um, he's one of our four racers like this, they all lead the fence and he comes up the fence, so it, it, was, it, was, it was very pretty to watch. We tell them every week there's nothing wrong with... Darkie expected to win. He won this race last year by seven lengths. Well, Hueta had other ideas, even Maximal had other ideas. As they turn for home here, Duff, Zaki in front, Weta getting up on the rails. Yeah, look, um, he just, I can't find any excuses for him. He relaxed beautifully in front. He was entitled to quicken. And uh, Weta, who was much better suited there um, on a drier track, there's no doubt about it. And, and Maximal, well, John's been singing his praises and he finally uh, delivered. Uh, Yep, uh, he's uh, he's on his way and he could well be the new kid on the block. Yeah, without a doubt. I just loved how he, when he got up the fence, like, I, I, don't, I don't think Zaki was stopping by all means, neither. I think he just had a great turn of foot and really accelerated the line. I'm not sure about Nash on Maximal, whether he spotted Kieran going up the in, inside there. I reckon he, he, he was timing his run really well, had his eyes on Zaki, but I, I'm not sure he caught Kieran getting up the fence. Yeah, maybe he, he, he did catch him unaware. <laughs> I don't it would have made much difference, though. No. Uh, uh, let's go and hear from Paul Snowden. Race number seven, the BRC Sprint winner, exempt from ballot in the Stradbroke. And they're all there except for Vinko. Here's number one. Here's number one, Alligator Blood. Well, what do we think about him? He's had uh, 161 days off. It's a big ass first up in this grade after... He's had a couple of trials there, but... Uh... For James McDonald, Chris Waller, $10 into seven fifty. Taxu goes the other way, four sixty out to eight fifty. Oscar Zulu is eight fifty out to ten, back to nine fifty. And Dawn Passage, $21 into of premium choice at BRC Sprint at Group 3 is starting the main quaddy. And let's have a look at what's happening with the bookmakers. Socks are gone favourite. 5.50 out to 6, back to 5.50. It's open now. They're racing. Oscar Zulu, Nick and Nova. Hollyfield all began well. And going forward there is Emerald Kingdom and also Buffalo River. Taxu right up there in the firing line as well. Gospodin's handy. Then coming Tycoonus and Socks are gone. And also Gem Song just in behind those horses. Dawn Passage, Alligator Blood is trapped out three and four wide. Vinco Irish songs have drifted back and Blondo's last of all. So Buffalo River led the way from second. Taxu third is Nick and Nova. Fourth is Emerald Kingdom. Fifth 
the inside is Hollyfield. And next over on the outside there is Gospodin, Desert Lord, Oscar Zulu, Socks are gone, Alligator Blood, Gem Song, Iris Songs, also Tycoonus and Vinco, Dawn Passage and Blondo at the 450. So Buffalo River from second, Taxu third is back near the inside, Nick and Nova. Then coming next there is Emerald Kingdom, Hollyfield looking for the way clear, Oscar Zulu, the inside, Socks are gone, Gospodin and Alligator Blood is right down the outside. Just with the leaders, the inside, Buffalo River, Nick and Nova the outside, Socks are gone, Hollyfield, Taxu and Alligator Blood down the outside, Nick and Nova, Buffalo River, Hollyfield, flashing light, Socks are gone and Alligator Blood, horses everywhere, they hit the line, oh it's a photo, Socks are gone prominent with Alligator Blood, Nick and Nova, Hollyfield, not sure the judge will confirm, followed there by Blondo, Tycoonus, Vinco, further back was Buffalo River, Emerald Kingdom, Iris Songs, Taxu, Gem Song, Gospodin, Oscar Zulu, followed by Desert Lord and Dawn Passage pulled up at the rear. Soxagon is going to get into the Stradbroke, nosing out Alligator Blood. When the judge calls a hold, it'll be number five. Yeah, he'll get there, Ronnie, will he? Yep. Gee whiz, it's close. It's a nose. It'll go to Soxagon. Wow, what a ripper horse he is. He's a curry trained out of Toowoomba. Alligator blood, what a comeback from this headline horse. Tim Clark for Gay and Adrian, number seven, Nikonova has... Sort of four across, uh, I think probably six or seven covered two lengths. Even Nikonova was, you know, amazing, uh, third up from a spell. But it was actually great to see Soxagon, you know, the opportunity perhaps to be ridden a little bit further back than what we're used to seeing him. I mean, alligator blood, he's just four and five wide the whole way. Uh, and we didn't know where to put alligator blood in the mix yesterday, but I think we do now. Yeah, great to see him back, Alligator Blood. Yeah, yeah, that's it, very encouraging. So he could well be a Stradbroke horse. This Stradbroke's wide open. Race eight, the Group 1 million dollar Queensland derby. One is two to Kaka, the Kiwi. Yeah, a negative ride, never wet and dry form, hard to beat. Yeah, another great parade. The word is he's done really well this week and he deserves to be favourite. Kabosh for Walla. Yep, uh, look, raw horse with different... Bowman and Walla combined with Paternal. Yeah, the market likes him a lot. Um, nice horse, he was very good in the rough habit. He could race closer from the draw and has to be respected with upside. Queensland derby from Eagle Farm and we are two and a half minutes away. Let's have a look at what's happening with the bookmakers. And the Gately best for this venue, Dark Destroyer, 360 into 350, back to 360. Paternal, 440 out to $4.80. Good support everywhere for Pinarello. 850 out to nine into six dollars and fifty cents. And has been freshened again as it makes holds. Still holding, hits the button now. Racing in the derby. Dark Destroy the inside, Paternal. Anything goes began well and rolling forward. Global Osbrecht, Kabosh handy. Two to Kaka's going up there as well. Satirical Glory and Minachi trapped out but going forward. Dark Rebel had gone back and Ting Tong is back about second last early doors here. But Minachi has taken over and kicked away by two and a half lengths. Second Global Osbrecht, third two to Kaka, fourth the outside is Satirical Glory. And then coming Anything Goes in Pin. Pinarello, Paternal the inside, Belmorris, Rebel the inside, has to whip the derby field in. So Manazzi here by length and a quarter. Second, Global Ospread. Third, two, Dukaka. Fourth, the inside as anything goes. And then we've got going four down, Pinarello, three wide and passing. Satirical glory, Belmorris has been deep. And then coming Paternal and Kabosh and Dark Destroyer the inside. Southern Stock, Villa Den, Red Wave, Nestag the inside of Impel Gazelle. And further back to Ting Tong. And then Sea Treasures is second last and Dark Rebel has last out three wide of the 600 metres marker. Manazzi from Global Osbred and Pinarello's on the scene three and four wide and then we've got just in behind those two to Kaka and also Paternal as they swing around the home turn and Southern Stock is making ground Villa Den and Ting Tong is down the outside but Pinarello has taken over in the derby. Making ground coming through is Paternal and Southern Stock on the outside. Dark Destroyer's running home as well and also Ting Tong on the 
outside, Pinarello and also Paternal. Pinarello, Paternal, Southern Stock and Kabosh is running home late. The inside here, Pinarello, Paternal, Pinarello, Paternal. They hit the line in the derby and Pinarello. Pinarello's won the derby from Paternal. It's a photo third, Kabosh or Dark Destroyer. Southern Stock and Ting Tong followed by Bell Morris Red Wave. Global Ospread, Villa Den, Impel Gazelle, Tudic, anything goes, pulled up at the rear. What a derby win by Pinarello. Leith Innes from an outside alley. Roger James and Robert Wellwood. He's just lasted Pinarello. He'll score by a little more than a nose over Paternal. It's Pinarello over Paternal. But, Roddy, tell us how good a ride from Leith Innes. Well, you have a look where he drew uh, right off the track there. Half He's been a weak, frail horse his whole preparation and uh, he'd been seven weeks prior to his last win and um, that was quite spectacular that day. And uh, I thought we can find a better way to the derby. Did you set your sights on this? Look, I just said there, I said, wow, what a ride this is. There'll be no excuses. And then he made the early move, mm. Leith, and I thought, oh, geez, are you getting a bit itchy? But he didn't. He read the speed. They slowed up. He made his move. He kept in a rhythm, and he knew what he had underneath him. Uh, so a great ride, a fitting result, um, really nice horse. Paternal was all over a winner. Mm. He, he he just lacked the... Well, killer race, punch. Yeah, lacked the killer punch that the winner had. I thought, looking at the replay again, that Kabotch was unlucky. Um, probably should have nearly won. Just got held up behind them there for a while. And well, great ride and a, and a terrific training performance yeah, at, at that. it was. Five weeks between runs, Bernie. And uh, Lee Thinnes, who we're going to hear from, he ends his career with 31 Group 1 victories uh, across the Tasman, uh, both sides. Another Group 1, Tab Kingsford Smith Cup, race 9, 1300 $700,000 in prize money, his private eye. Yeah, well, he's had the 56-day freshen, two trials since the Doncaster Mile. He was brilliant winning last time he was at Eagle Farm. Remember that Guineas win here? And I'm expecting he's over the moon with him. Greg Hickman's got 11-11. Look, he should have finished closer there first up. You have a look at his Queensland record. It's amazing. Every time he comes to Queensland, he doesn't do anything but run well. I feel as though he missed the... Uh, here's Desley's chance for a Group 1 glory, Apache Chase. Yeah, one of my favourites. He's a beauty. Um, he's a terrific horse. He's a seven-time winner here. He was nudged out first up. Nud uh, look, Des has been walking the box all day, so she must be confident. Uh, last time out, but I think... Uh, here is Rothfire. Yeah, where do we stand with him now? He's, he's a terrific horse. He's had his issues along the way. Um, yeah, I don't know what to think of him on a dry track today. He could bounce, jump out of the ground. Well, to look... 100 metres is some concern, but she's got a touch of class when she's right and she could well be a great day for New Zealand here. Oh, she was very good New Zealand mare this. She was terrific in the Derman Cup first up. She's hard to hold out with any world. He was just nudged out by a very very good horse last start. That's good form lines. Although he hasn't won past 1200. He gets every opportunity to get it on a hard track here today. Yeah he does. He's going to get $5 in the favourite. It's an open race right but there's twice as much money on Paulelli as there isn't on Trivier. To show you how much we've got a spread of money in this race though is in Queensland 15 to 13 11 11 loves it up here as well Brooklyn hustled this time last year 26 into 17 but most punters know that they're going the way of Apache Chase he's just a horse that really takes your eye but there is long odds on Ting Almedo and 11 11 both began well Paul Lely's going for there's Apache Chase break out of the pack and handy also a September run Rothfire's going for then coming Scalopini Ellsberg 11 11 had drifted back eyes are tight the outside Brooklyn hustled Signore Fox on Trivier, Private Eye trapped out while Planet had gone back away, game gone back to last of all as they swing down the side and a third last there over on the outside as Laws of Indices, so it's Apache Chase here from second, is Powell Laley, third the inside, September run, fourth is Rothfire, a length and three quarters to Almedo, Ellsberg the outside as they approach the home turn, 600 metres left to go and just in behind us, Scalopini, Private Eye, 11-11, Laws of Indices, Brooklyn Hustle Eliza Tape on Trivier, Signore Fox, and also further back in the field, a Wild Planet and away game at the 425. Apache Chase the leader, second is Powell Laley. Rothfire's working home, September run the inside. Scalopini's out deep on the track and back.
back behind those is Brooklyn Hustle. It's Apache Chase still with the lead. The outside is Powell Laley. The inside, September Run. Apache Chase from September Run. Powell Laley lifting late as Rothfire. 11 11 flashing home as well. Apache Chase just in front near the line. He gets in, I think. Apache Chase may be in a photo. Lunging though was 11 11. Rothfire, Powell Laley all right up there. Stand by for the judge. Then we had Private Eye Scalapini. Brooklyn Hustle Eyes at Tame. Away Gay Melsberg. Wild Planet Signore Fox on Trivia. Laws of Indices. Almedo's pulled up at the rear. Beautiful. Desley Forster. You've got it. You've got it. You've got it. A group one. Her first group one for a much loved lady of Queensland racing. There's tears everywhere here. Oh, just an amazing training performance from Desley. She's travelled this horse up to Rockhampton to run in the Archer. She said before the race that he'd missed that trial, so he just was missing a little bit of... How brave is that? What a beauty. He, he, he did have a soft enough lead, but still, Jimmy got on his... Round the corner, he skipped away, and he, as Bruce... Not here today. This is for you, Maddie. Michael, Greg Hedges, Briley, Erica, and Young Hass. I've only got a small team that I can say and Bo. I can name them all on one hand. And this is just, this is everyone. And this is for mum and dad at home. Yeah. They made the trippy lift and mum, my mum, should be ecstatic. She'd be probably sitting in the couch crying. We're ecstatic, but look, this has been our project. Mike, Terry. It was a great day and as I said, it was, I said probably a well deserved for him really, as he's been a good horse and he probably deserves it. A good horse, he's been more the machines and let him run and like use his attribute where he's got such a high cruising speed and make it like a really like I know he can run a mile and I know the thirteen hundred was gonna be quite easy for him to run along really high cruising speed and that's what we did yesterday and we were adamant that from the six hundred we were always gonna um, pick up the speed and be really like go full throttle from the six hundred and make it a really genuine strong six hundred last six hundred. I think it sort of caught them off guard a little bit actually. The fact that he he got to pretty much exactly that six hundred metre spot. Most people aren't excited expecting the, the leader to take off 600 from home, especially at Eagle Farm with that long run in. So it was as if he caught them all off guard. Yeah, exactly. Probably being at Eagle Farm, everyone's nervous. I'm Apache Cat, but I've got the jockey of Apache Cat right here. <laughs> um, Apache Chase. Now, Desley, what about the Stradbroke? What, what's the week going to be like? And can he improve? You've seen, seen him play. From Eagle Farm and see how the bookmakers play here. And the joint favourites, Kem and Tari, 360 to 5 and shooting for gold solid at 5. Ball of 7 into 650. Good support everywhere. Second Australian run for the Kiwi, trained by Tony Pike, Babylon Berlin. 950 into 750. What's the read there, Gator? Right now, racing. Centre fire, the inside began. Well, shooting for gold out the back. He came out a couple of lengths behind the field, but centre fire's got the lead from rolling 40 to Sir Warwick and also handy there is also Babylon Berlin going forward and Prime Candidate coming over from out wide but Sir Warwick the leader from Prime Candidate 30 to centre five fourth the outside Babylon Berlin a length and a half to ball and Nick and Nova further back to hide low let's be glam Kamantari Wanderbar second last shooting for gold is last about seven or eight lengths off the leader Sir Warwick and Prime Candidate by length and a half from 30 to centre five fourth the outside Babylon Berlin, Ball and Nick and Nova. Kamantari's been wide. Let's be glam high low. Further back to Wanderbar, peeling out, shooting for goals. Still last at the 400. Narrowly the outside, prime candidate now. Sir Warwick, the inside, centre fire. Babylon, Berlin, Nick and Nova. Ball are coming through. Let's be glam high low, the inside. Wanderbar's down the outside and Kamantari coming as well. That's stretched across the track, but Baller has taken over. Running home as Kamantari. Wanderbar, the outside, shooting for goal as well. But Baller's in front and Baller's won. Baller from Wanda Bar. Kevin Tari shooting for gold. Followed by Let's Be Glam. Nick and Nova. Centre fire. Prime candidate. Babylon Berlin. High low. And Sir Warwick has pulled up at the rear. Baller has won easily here from Wanda Bar. 
Kementari shooting for gold. It's a double for the Golan Stable. Number. He hadn't won a race since he won this race uh, this time last year. He was solid today in the market, and Bowman uh, gets the job done on him from Wanda Bar. How honest is she? Kementari. Of the day, the Group 1 Queensland Oaks. Here is Barb Raider for Jerome Hunter Craig Williams. Well, she's a very genuine filly, backing up with a good heart and a great racing style. Only has to hold a form to be in the finish. How can you not love her? Look at that for a parade. Taking no ill effect from last weekend's win. Gypsy Goddess Pike and Van Dyke. Yeah, look, some say a horror draw to overcome, but, you know, he'll work it out, Pike, whether he goes forward, back or whatever. The, the facts are she's two for two here at uh, Eagle Farm. She's four from four on, on dry tracks and just hard to beat with even luck, I think. She doesn't win a bit. And she's about to catch up with David Van Dyke. In fact, she's with him right now. We're set, just waiting for Biscayne Bay. Now we're right. The gate's open. They're racing. Gypsy Goddess out wide was away fairly, but she's drifting back. Barb Raider began well, and rolling forward is Neota. Handy, the inside is Nom de Plume, and Aravain is right up there as well. Uh, trapped out early doors, Eris Festival Dance, also Biscayne Bay, and Keeper's Kiss. And back behind those is Lavilli and Taranga, followed there by Rosie Impact and Gin Martini, three wide. Further back to Glint, further back to Rosie Impact, Dynasties and Belle Savoir. Further back on the field there to Smirk. Also Gypsy Goddess back near the inside as Honey Creeper and Verona the outsider still last of all as they swing down the side. So it's Neota here by length and a quarter. Second is Biscayne Bay. Third the inside is Aravain. Barbara fourth the outside. One out, one back and they're well clear at the moment from Nom de Plume. Festival Dancer. Further back to Keeper's Kiss. A length and a half to Lavilli. And then we've got Creeping for there. Gin Martini. Dynasty is going forward as well. Gypsy Goddess is about to take off as they really bunch up there and then we've got Glint of Hope and back behind those is Honey Creeper and also further back to Taranga and also Belle Savoir Smirk and last of all there is Verona at the 400 metres marker but Barb Raider has taken over here comes Lavilli the outside and Gypsy Goddess is finishing brilliantly Gypsy Goddess out wide has dashed up and taken over Barb Raider the inside and Lavilli between them in front Gypsy Goddess Barb Raider the inside Gypsy Goddess just put the lead from Barb Gypsy Goddess in front and Gypsy Goddess has won the Oaks from Barb Raider. Third Mobili followed by Smirk, Belle Savoir, Honey Creeper, Gin Martini, Dynasties and then we had Rosie Impact followed further back by Aravine, Glint of Hope and then Nom de Plume, Verona followed further back by Biscayne Bay, Neota, Cupid's Kiss, Festival Dancer and Taranga pulled up at the rear. Well, David Van Dyke has his oaks and Willie Pike seals his move to the east. This wonderful filly. She's come from near last. But what a confident Willie Pike he was. She's rounded them up. She loves it. Oh, yeah, that was just amazing. And the, the love and care that's gone into her over the last seven and a half months since she won her maiden to keep her up. You know, Emma, the staff, the vet, the farrier. It's just been an amazing period of time where, you know, we, we were just focused on getting this girl to the best possible place and to finish that with a group one is, it's a career highlight. Tell us what you had to do. To the boys a couple of weeks ago, you know, if it was any other horse, we'd probably turn her out. But um, we just gave her every chance to get here. She bounced back. Well. A live chance as Queenslanders in the Oaks, um, but to have the favourite and then to have her be able to give them such a start, circle the entire field and be coming away from them at the end. She is by far the best that Queensland has produced and what's really exciting about her is we don't often produce many. Uh, he's done a great job with all these. Had no luck in, in Oaks in the past with mm. a lot of horses uh, but he, he, he sort of gets the job done here. He's Like, he's, like I said, he's He's just had a perfect for the day. He's taken to the trials. He's mixed with the tactics. And uh, Willie knew how to ride. And, and even Willie had worked her out. He, he, he even flies up to trial to get a yeah. feel of her. And he would have been confident since the Sydney Oaks when he did ride her forward. And he probably had the back of his head, oh, it's no, not the way to ride her. It's not the way to ride her. I, I think it was a really smart ride. Like, I know that the sectionals were quite quick uh, out, of the, out of the straight first time. And, you know, so down the back. But... It was just a good smart ride because at about the 600 you could see 
pikey thinking, if I don't go now, it's going to be a chain reaction. And he's, he, I know he come around deep, but he would have been much deeper if he had waited another sort of half a furlong because they would have, mm. everyone would have started to make their move because the, the leaders were tiring coming back to the field. Um, but I just thought it was a great smart ride from Willie to get up and sort of hold a few in before he got too close to the turn. It must be one of the most frustrating feet in Brigade there. She, she's a, a really brave filly bar braider. She's been terrific all the way through. If you had backed Lavilli, uh, you would have been giggling in the run. She was just cruising and Tim Clark gave her a beautiful ride but just wasn't good enough. And I think Smirk will make the grade with time. She's one of the nicer types in the race. And uh, she, she can improve with a, that preparation under her belt. But uh, the winner's a, a, yeah. a really good horse. Unassuming, she's a little, well, she's a witty little parrot mouth thing. You, yeah. you, you wouldn't pick her in a, in a line-up. Yeah, that's when she's sure. in Sydney, I, I looked at her and was quite surprised. Up at two mile, like it was last year, won by Knight's Order. Here's King of Lear Grants, Johnny Allen, Robert Hickmont. Well, he's a victor. So we've got Through Irish Eyes, who is around $4 and is really well back, despite that price. Uh, we haven't seen a shifters yet. Our trader's holding firm, but I wouldn't be surprised to see through Irish Eyes shorten. Irish sequel there at $4.40, a last start. Winner Sweet Thomas at $5 has trimmed him from that $8 mark, but not as much. There is Irish sequel and also through Irish Eyes, our three wide poking forward as well. And Bell Morris is coming over from out wide. Further back to Papalino. And then we've got the fearless one out three wide. Sweet Thomas between them, a length and a half to Luna to stint and introduce. And King of Lear Grants has gone back to last of all. So Splendid for us here by two. King of Lear Grants last of all, about nine or ten lengths off the leader. So Splendid for us here by length and a half. Second is Traduce and third the outsider is Fearless One and Maricopa the fence and back behind those horses there is Papalino the inside through Irish Eyes is creeping forward with also Bell Morris. A length and a half to Irish Sequel over on the outside of Luna Snit. Sweet Thomas still second last and King of Lear Grants is still last. So Splendid for us down the side. Length and a half clear. Second Traduce and third the inside there is Maricopa and then the Fearless One and back behind those is Papalino. Papalino through Irish Eyes, the outside creeping forward about five or six lengths off the leader. Irish sequel further back. Bell Morris is gone, passed by Luna Snit the inside. Sweet Thomas now third last. King of Lear Grants the inside now second last as Bell Morris has dropped right out. But Splendiferous at the 450. Kicked away about three lengths in front here from Traduce. Maricopa the inside through Irish Eyes is running home. The fearless one, Papalino the inside and running home as well as Irish sequel. Sweet Thomas is right down the outside. Luna Snit runs a cheeky race as well, but through Irish Eyes has taken over. Irish sequel the outside. Sweet Thomas out deeper. Luna Snit the, the next one through Irish Eyes. Irish sequel and Sweet Thomas driving through as Irish sequel. Irish sequel through Irish Eyes. Kicks back, but I think Irish sequel's just won from through Irish Eyes. Third Sweet Thomas followed by Luna Snit and then Maricopa trailed over by Papalino. Splendiferous and Traduce and back behind those horses was the field one, King of Lear Grants and Bell Morris has dropped right out to finish at the rear. Irish sequel is going to prevail. He gets his nose down in time. Fight as he would through Irish eyes. No match for Irish sequel when the judge called a halt. And it's, McD and it's McDonald and Waller combining to win a Brisbane Cup. Well, the two mile group two Brisbane Cup. Only six runners lined up last year, 11 this year, so they're rebuilding this two-mile Brisbane Cup. It goes the way of Waller and McDonald. Waller's already in the UK. McDonald flew out last night on the plane with his pregnant fiancée, I believe. Caitlin Mannion is expecting. Yeah, so it's a, it's a big, big, dis well, a big, big announcement. Big announcement, big week coming up. Yeah, my word, and uh, he's... Well, this is just fresh blood coming into the race, wasn't it? He, he, he won at Rose Hill, the Winter Cup, and the timing was right. Um, he's always been a, a little bit of a work in progress. He's obviously a dry tracker, and, and um, well, we keep saying it, a good training performance. Through Irish, Irish Eyes is just a, a real grinding two-miler, and he, he whacked away OK there. Sweet Thomas, well, he... Missed his opportunity when he was a certainty beat last start, and he went down fighting. You know, he's an 11 year old, rising, you know, he, he's rising, I'm oh, sorry, he's rising 11. Mm. Um, he's 10 now. He he's just sets him up, Matt, and he just loves the two mile, but uh, 
and he went down fighting. So, uh, all in all, you know, where are we with this race? I don't know. Well, they've got to start rebuilding it again. They found a little stud for him to stand at, and this is his last run in a race today, and I think he is a huge chance of going out a winner. I thought he was terrific in the Durban go, and I thought he did enough in a slowly run race last time. Uh, so, I can't Zaki yet, but after today we may, may be calling him one, you know, an up-and-comer like Zaki. Got all the favours last week. He's short enough here. The yeah, variant was five weeks since winning the Gosford Cup. It's a big step up to uh, wait for age now. Kukaracha, a derby winner. He's much better after over-racing, so if he settles better today, he's right in this. It was really well backed. I think a lot of those are seeing horses like Hopeful come out of listed races and, and strong winners, but when you've got a winner at wait for age, group one level, uh, you're going to take up a fair bit of the market, aren't you? 280 to 350, but best back. The chosen one you see is 41 into 19, but there's not a heap of money there. Uh, just a heads up as well, I did touch on it. So first run last year, the Q22. This is the second running, and they're at the gates. Q22, they stand well, and the gates open, they're racing. Estefini, the inside, Numerian both jumped away well. Hopeful is handy, Ballistic Boy is rolling up there, Colding is handy as well, with Yonkers, albeit trapped out, London Banker, followed for the back, and the Field all G London Banker, no room there. Cooker Rachel slides past him, Coventina Bay. Cree Dearest and the chosen one had gone back and wet horse now fourth last. And back behind those is Ladon de V. Dearest the outside and further back to London Bank and Maximal. Wet horse now third last. A length and a half away, second last now is Great House and shuffle back to last of all now is Ladon de V. So it's you Marion down the side by three quarters to the second, Hofel. Third's Esti Feeney, fourth Colding. And they're clear at the moment from Cooker Yonkers and a break in the field too. Ballistic Boy, Coventina Bay. A length and a half to the chosen one. Extricating three wide to go further. Four, Creadiris out deeper. And they're clear from Maximal, the inside of London Banker. Wetor is still third last over on the outside of Great House. And Ladon de Vert, the 500 metres marker. So the leader is still at New Merion from Hope for the outside. Estefini is looking for the way clear. Colding the outside, chiming in. Cucaracha looking for the way clear. Yonkers down the outside and further back to Coventina Bay. New Merrin still the leader. Trying hard as Colding. Esty Feeney back nearer the inside. Uh, working home as well as Cucaracha. Yonkers the outside and Maximal's coming home late. It's New Merrin still the leader. The outside Colding. New Merrin still in front though and New Merrin's won. From second will be Colding. Not sure third. Esty Feeney, Maximal and Yonkers in the photo. Followed by Cucaracha. Wetor, London Banker, Great House Hopeful. Ladon de V, the Chosen one, Ballistic Boy, Coventina Bay and Crea Deer has pulled up at the rear. Well, Annabelle Nisham has won both editions of the Q22 Zaki last year, Numerian this year, and Tommy Berry, Tommy Berry wins. Big prize money. It was a $1.2 million race, and it's new looking for the winning trainer. Here she is, Annabelle Nisham. Two runnings of the Q22. Zaki last year, New Merion this year. Did you set your sights on the race after the Gosford Cup? Yeah, we did. Um, we, sort of, we nearly came by. You're Annabelle Nisham with Zaki off the back of a Doomben Cup. And she won it this year with New Merion. Yeah, she's got a, a real a, a affinity with these, you know, imported horses, getting them right. She takes her time. Well, she's an importer, so far. That's right. Well, <laughs> she is. But, this horse, he sort of was struggling, struggling, struggling. She got him right to win the Gosford Cup. Uh, had her eyes on this prize, which is worth a lot of money. And he got a lovely on pace run, didn't he? And he delivered. So he's on his way. He's no Zaki. No. Uh, but he's good enough to win a... Uh, a race of this calibre and, and he's got racing style and substance as well so a uh, good effort he's, he's a six year old, he's, he's been well raced, he's had 27 starts now but um, she'll keep placing him well, much better from Colding uh, to get him up and going again at 2200 mind you at that he's run boldly uh, what do we want to say here, I don't know, I don't know how strong this race was either to tell you the truth Yonkers battled away, he's a good honest horse Maximo was held up and lost a lot of momentum in that race and probably should have finished closer. Estefeni um, did a good job at Big Odds. OK, uh, let's... And Bruce, the first of the group ones, bring it on. Absolutely, Richo. It's the JJ Atkins, formerly the TJ Smith, of course, and they did the right thing. I know 
Uh, Tommy's got a great race named after him in Sydney, the great sprint race, but they did the right thing because Jim Atkins deserved to have a race named after him here, and they did, and they picked a... Certainly is, yeah, I guess the hope if you're backing that horse is, even though we've seen historically that uh, that horse is a back marker. Maybe from barrier five they might be able to settle that a little bit closer. But as we have a look at the market, political debate, let's not forget, after that win the other week, political debate was $3.50 favourite. It's now $5. I will say there's not much confidence on track and there's not much confidence when it comes to money held either. All of the money is with track and there's not much confidence when it comes to money held either. All of the money is with She's a Belter, the second favourite. It's held around that $4.40 mark, but we've got that to lose 19 and even more the remainder. But the best backed by a space is She's a Belter. Thanks for that, Ben. We'll get the hot horse. And the gates open. They're racing. Basky up the inside. Sharp and smart began well. Twin Stars going forward. Ringmaster right up there as well with also Coco Brew Express. And rolling forward is Brereton. Further back to She's a Belter. Fearless Knight the inside. And then Brosden, Tyresa, Green Shadows trapped out west of Africa. Stars. Third is Basky out. Fourth and three wide there. Going forward is back nearer the outside. Is now Brereton has gone back to fifth now. So swing down the side. Ringmaster going forward up into third and fourth now. And then we've got Green Shadows going forward. She's a belter. Further back is Sharp and Smart. Fearless Knight the inside. Brosnan as they approach the home turn. Just in behind those lethal thoughts out wider. And then coming Tyresa, west of Africa. Uh, political debate. Owen County's out deeper. And then coming Heroic Sun. And last of all is Mashani Spartan at the 450. Coco Brooks Pressy with the lead. Second the outside is Twin Star. Basky up back nearer the inside. Ringmaster running home. She's a belter down the outside. Brereton is further back and right down the outside is Lethal Thoughts making ground but she's a belter has stormed the lead here. Trying hard the inside is Basky Yard. She's a belter's in front from Basky Yard. Uh, late is Brosden down the outside. Sharp and smart coming late as well but she's a belter's in front from a wall. She's a belter has won from photos. Political debate flash time as did Brosden. Basky Yard sharp and smart. Wait for the judge there. Then Lethal Thoughts followed further back by Ringmaster, Ty Reesa, Fearless Knight and then we had back behind those was Owen County, Coco Brew Express, Twin Stars, a long way back was Brereton, West of Africa, Mashani Spartan, Heroic Sun and Green Shadows. What a carnival it has been for Peter and Paul Snowden. It all started with Marzu on the back of his Oaks winning Group 1 ride. He bags a JJ Atkins. I tell you what, Pike's here to stay. The Snowdens are in. And the Perth filly wins the Group 1. Yeah, she did. And she's a ripper. She is an absolute ripper. Um, he's a good he's a good cult political debate. Boy, he'll be something to... When he gets over further in the spring, there's no doubt he got a long way back. He wouldn't go again. This filly's just won the Magic Millions over here. I think she's pretty good. I want you to take her, and he's here today, which is great. But, um, you know, full full credit to him. We're just... Jay Atkins, she joins a great group of uh, horses who have won the double. This Perth filly sent to the Snowdens, and what a reward they have reaped. Yeah, and uh, she's a good filly. She's on obviously on top of the ground filly. She's got a turn of speed to put a field away. She switched on. The Snowdens have had an outstanding carnival. There's no doubt about it. She's a good horse, his second horse. Um, political debate. He, he sort of lost the plot early again. He just, he, was, he seemed shy between horses. They tried those winkers yesterday and once he got galloping room and the race was all over, he's, it was a miracle he's got into second spot. And look, I, as far as being, um, lo, you know, we love our racing. Oh, and, we love our racing. <laughs> and going forward, if that horse would have won that race, we mightn't have seen him for much longer. Political debate. Political mm -hmm. debate. But he'll, he is a horse that could, with his pedigree, and his ability, and he's going to keep learning and learning and learning. He's going to be a really good uh, 2,000 metre, maybe even a little bit further horse mm. that can win some big races, some big races. And that's not saying uh, that Sharp and Smart won't as well. Yes. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with a spell under both those horses' uh, belts. And they're going to come back. They're going to be high profile. This is always a good grounding race, this one. And I think uh, they're, they're, they're both exciting horses and just 
the, going back to that winner, every time I see that winner, I just keep thinking of that other filly in Perth, Amelia's Jewel, mm. the unbeaten one. Um, there's another one over there. There's a better, and, and I'm saying a lot better. better. Yeah. Um, well, we've got to get it here for the Everest, that Amelia's Jewel, I'm telling <laughs> Give you. Give her a slot. <laughs> that race, get her into that. 18 runners to look at in the Tab Stradbroker 2022. One is Private Eye, Abdullah and Pride. Yeah, it has his fair share of weight, but it was excellent last start after a wide run in the Kingsford Smith. 1,400 suits, much better. Not many horses have won this race with this much weight in a, a long time over the last 20 years. So it's, that's his only negative, is the weight. Yeah, it does make it a little bit tough. Uh, probably get a little bit more pressure today, but I think Jimmy Byrne knows him so well. He'll go out hard. All the ticks in the world. He loves Brisbane. He never runs bad. Here. He looks the horse that drawn has drawn and maps the best. For, Bowman's got confidence with him in him, and he's ready to go. see sprint first up. He needs things to fall into place from this awkward draw. But I tell you what, if it does, he, I'm expecting further improvement and him being right in the finish. And he's just had some beautiful improvement since we saw him last. Socks are gone. A, ro a roth fire. Well, he's an injury plagued four-year-old. If we know how good he is when he's right, but he's had so many injuries and problems. Problems, but he's got work to do rushing across from this outside. It's just a matter of he's going to have much left at the finish after doing that. Yeah, that's what it... Victorian Ayrton. Well, five weeks in a trial since forgiving on the heavy at 1,800 uh, second up there. So we know he's loaded with talent. Um, they've gone back to the drawing board. They're in great form. The price and Kent stable. And uh, these Victorians have had a picnic in this Stradbroke mm. over the last 10 years. Yeah, haven't they? And th as far as Ron Duffercy is concerned, here come the Duff selections. He's also with Ayrton. Freshened and back to the trials. Genuine excuses last time out on that. The back them all. It's what that Strad broke. And here we are, seven bucks the field, a couple of minutes out. 11 11's the best backed runner. 27% of the hold going that direction. So that far outweighs the price. And is a pretty good go in a big race like this. Ayrton at $8 has been the drifter. Isotope $9.50. Apache Chase $10. Laws of Indices at 11 with Alligator Blood. Volana at $11. And then Rothfire at 12 as we continue to go down. Now, Brooklyn Hustle, you can see at a longer odds, $17. Private Eye, well, Joe Pride, his son's favourite horse just won. Now we'll see if his favourite horse can as well. We're talking even more than a month. Now we're right. The gate's open. Racing in the strap broken. Private Eye, the inside began well. In company there with Emerald Kingdom. And Isotope is going forward. Volana is fourth early doors. Apache chases fifth the inside. Going forward is Rothfire, but he's trapped out three and four wide there. And further back in the field too, Bandit Snatch. And next back nearer the inside there as Socks are gone. Ayrton's over on the outside. And further back in the run too. Next one there is 11-11. Alligator Blood. Nick and Nova back nearer the inside as they swing down the side. Trapped out there is Buffalo River and uh, Star Tontes, Brooklyn Hustle the outside and Wild Planet's about four or five lengths away last of all. So Rothfire led the way from second. Laws of Indices. Third is Emerald Kingdom. Volana fourth. Ayrton's been wide of the 600 metres marker. Private Eye back nearer the inside. Isotopes in that division as well. Apache Chasers further back and Alligator Blood and right towards the outside is also Buffalo River at the 400 metres marker. Rothfire as a leader. Isotope is out after him. Ayrton's down the outside. Lords of Indices is still there. Alligator Blood is running home as well. And further back in the field too. Socks are gone. Rothfire is still the leader. Here comes the blood now. Alligator Blood on the outside. Stormed up and took over. Alligator Blood's in front. Flashing late. Private Eye. But Alligator Blood's won the straight break from Private Eye. Third Rothfire. Photo fourth. Uh, out wide. Brooklyn Hustle. Star Tontes. Isotope Ayrton. Followed by Iron Superman, Laws of Indices, Valana, Emerald Kingdom, Socks are gone, Wild Planet, followed by Bandersnatch, Apache Chase, Buffalo River, and 11 11 pulled up at the rear. Alligator Blood wins his second group one. Jesus Has he put controversy behind him for good? Alligator Blood is the Stradbroke winner. Tim Clark. Gay Waterhouse and Adrian Bott.
Alligator blood right down the centre of the... Wow, he's back. He's back oh, and, and singing the winner's praises. I don't think I've seen a better thing beat than Private Eye. It'd be a, a tale of woe of, from Brenton Abdullah. He was bolting behind them. He had nowhere to go. And the winner's off and gone. And good luck to the winner. But, oh, there's some hard luck stories for the second horse there. And the locals have, have run through. Gay Waterhouse has trained her first Stradbroke winner. There are... Like, some he's, I was telling the owners before, you know, he's just yeah. such a happy horse and a great horse to do anything with. And we're, we've actually just wrapped that we've got him and he's come back to his best. So uh, what more can I say? And what a story with that alligator blood situation. I must say, you know, they've they, they brought him back from this kissing spine, which is that skeletal, you know, mm -hmm. in, uh, which is hard to get over. And and you've got to give it to Gay and Adrian. Um, look, when they first started... The and that... He uh, started out with David Van Dyke. He won the Magic Millions, three-year-old. Uh, he won it on the day where he was caught in traffic and almost didn't get to the track. That's right. Then he lost the race on a positive swab. There's, there was legal action taken to try and get the race back. Uh, there's an issue that forces Alligator Blood uh, to race in Queensland. He can't race in New South Wales. And here he is, rushing home down the outside, chasing another Queenslander, Roth fire and winning and bolting him. Yeah, it was amazing. He got that four wide, three and four wide train, you know, with it, with cover. He, you know, he, he found a really good spot, really, to just blend into the race at the right time, considering the barrier that he had. And he just improved that little bit, which we expected from that very good first up run. And, uh, well, he's a good horse. We all know he's a good horse. It's his tenth win. And, um, yeah, there's been hiccups along the way. But look at him stretch. He's, he's not feeling any, any pain that's for sure. Uh, I think one of the biggest certainties in the, I've ever seen beat in a big race uh, was Private Eye. I've never seen a horse travelling so well and he raced closer coming to the turn and it just turned ugly, ugly, ugly for him and he just lost all his momentum and uh, uh, it was bad luck for the connections there but you make your own luck in this business and uh, he was too good. Rothfire was good. He got control when um, a few of the, well look, Apache Chase didn't come out as quickly as normal. There was a bit of drama at the gates there early and Isotope, the other Queenslander, went nicely as well. But it's all about uh, the winner and how unlucky the second horse was, I think. Yeah, there was drama at the start in the gates. We sort of forget Apache Chase then. He's in behind them really pulling. We saw Jamie Carr get suspended at, I think, the six or 700 uh, metre mark for flattening Bandersnatch, which then came back... Um, on Greg Hickman's horse, 11-11. So there was still quite a lot of action throughout the race. And although the second horse appears to be incredibly unlucky when trying to get a run at the top of the straight, you still can't take anything away from Alligator Blood. I mean, yes, he was four deep, four and five deep uh, for a lot of that race. And he did at last start as well. So it's not as if he had any sort of cushy run in transit. Even though he had cover, he still had to cover that extra ground. So it was a great effort. Rob Heathcote. Well, also, probably one of the best runs in that race heading towards Tats Tiara was Star Tontes, flying up the inside, obviously, with only 50 and a half kilos on her back. So he's really got two nice run Action, so I'm guessing that's what might have happened. And uh, that... And it's pretty warm, William. William Haggis there speaking to Matt Chapman a couple of days ago about his brilliant Baid, who's won seven races out of seven, has broken through the million pound barrier in terms of prize money. The jockey there at the bottom, Johnny. Beat the punters in terms of the bet count are happy to spread their money. So high bet count outside of the favourite, and that's $7 the field outside of the favourite Baid. But he hasn't budged here, Matty. $1.16. Now he's rated down weights the best horse and the best miler in the world. Well, let's see it. So we uh, real world next best seven last for the Queen Anne stakes the straight mile and Royal Ascot about to get underway all of the horses in the stalls for the Queen Anne and they're off and racing accidental agent jumps out okay Sabuska was a little slow into stride and through the early stages order of Australia in purple and white is the first one to show chinned it in the striped colors in second place and over on the far side races real world in the Godolphin blue Baid blue with the white epaulets tracks the leaders racing in fourth with accidental Accidental of Australia, Chindit, Accidental Agent and Sabuska as they make their way down towards the final four furlongs in the Queen Anne. Order of Australia near side, but real
real world, possibly the overall leader, towing in Baid and Lights On, as in two groups they make their way down towards the final three furlongs. Real world out in the lead, Baid slipstreams him with Lights On. The near side group under the pump now order of Australia as Chindit tries to improve. Still Baid waits in the slipstream of real world as they move towards the final two furlongs and now Baid is gradually moving out to challenge real world. Order of Australia in third place and once again Baid moves to the front in imperious fashion. There is a shake of the reins. The response is to go two lengths clear from real world and now Baid begins to extend. Real world is trying really hard but it is push button brilliance from Baid. He makes it look routine as he maintains his unbeaten record in the Queen Anne. Of the Newbury in second, Order of Australia, Jindit, lights on Sabuska, an accidental agent. It all seems so straightforward. He seems completely unruffled in his personality, in his demeanour. He moves forward. Jim Crowley can place him where he likes. He asks for a response. It's enough. And here, he wasn't hard pressed to maintain a two length advantage. Let's give Real World full credit for running the home affairs run today alongside Nature's Drip. But with Coolmore, with Golden Power, that wasn't to be. So home affairs will run on. Saturday over 1200 metres but yesterday morning as well and James will measure that get a stride right give him some clear air and he'll run up to his best. He looked pretty comfortable here. The Oreo we, we talked about it in the introduction we've got a very fast horse for America in Golden Pal. Uh, Nature Strip uh, you'd think would camp off him. Is there any chance? It's all about Nature Strip. 92% of turnover is with the Strip. Come on, son. Come on, James. Come on, Chris. You can do it. $3.25 into $2.87. $2.90 as he settles. Golden Pal. Now, this horse is on fire, as you know. He's won his last three, and he'll go fast that first 800 metres. But will he last? Then man with Rob Waterhouse from Australia. Five to two Nature Strip. Man of promise, 10 to 1. 10 to 1 also Twilight calls. The, the thing with Winter Power, she's going to be happy if something leads her. She's quite happy to just drop in and it's all... Yeah, real shame. Mondebej doesn't look if he's going to take part. So Nature Strip for Australia and James McDonald and Chris Waller is last in for the King Stand Stakes. Five furlongs take less than a minute to run and they all burst out of the stalls. And slow away was Golden Powell. Golden Powell missed the start as Pontos and Winter Power are the first two to show. So it's the Czech runner. And at the back of the field. I think it's Cardam that might have unseated his rider coming out of the stalls as well. Nature Strip at Clem Express. Golden Powell trying to recover as they make their way through the first couple of furlongs. Winter Power and Arecibo are over on the far side. Down the centre, Man of Promise leading the Royal Runner Kings Lynn. Nature Strip right up there with Pontos and also making an international line on the stand side. Golden Powell at Clem Express comes next with Equilateral. Twilight Calls is next as they make their way down inside the final couple of furlongs. Nature Strip has gone to the front in the King stand. Golden Golden Pal is done. Winter Power Arecibo on the far side. Kings Lynn trying to get involved with Twilight Calls. And tis marvellous. It's Nature Strip out clear in the King stand by two lakes from Acklam Express. Twilight Calls then behind these equilateral. Salute a world class sprinter. Nature Strip a ripper in the King stand. Beat Twilight Calls Acklam Express. And behind those Munis to Maid Lake ground. Equilateral. St. Lawrence was next. Golden Pal Acklam Express comes next with Equilateral. Twilight Calls is next as they make their way down inside the final couple of furlongs nature strip has gone to the front in the king stand golden pal is done winter power arecibo on the far side kings lynn trying to get involved with twilight calls and tis marvelous it's nature strip out clear in the king stand by two lakes from acclam express twilight calls then behind these equilateral salute a world-class sprinter nature strip a ripper in the king stand beat twilight calls acclam express and behind those munis to made lake ground equilateral st lawrence was next they trail all the way back to Golden Powell who blew it at the start. What a horse. Nature Strip provides Australia with another win in the King stand and few have been so dominant. Accompanied to the line by the loose horse Cardam. Twilight Calls I think has just got second with Aklam Express, Munista and Equilateral the next bunch home. But in all honesty they were in a different parish. Nature Strip's won this further than Baid's won the Queen Anne has won by a good five lakes in the background. 58.2 27 within a second of Miss Andretti's track record. The others struggle to break a minute. Twilight calls Acclam Express. Oh, wow, that 
that was good for the owners who've been so sporting to come over here, including Messrs. Lyons, Harrison, Keane, Smith, Van Duren. Congratulations to them. That's naming just a few. This is going to be an emotional moment for trainer Chris Waller, Johnny Murta. How good was that? Yeah, that was a great performance. Yeah. You know, if, if, if you're if you're boasting or you're saying you're the... so lucky to be on him and. He's just an absolute freak of a horse. And I think he would have silenced a few critics <laughs> for that performance because it was scintillating. And I thought with the with the Ryless horse, I didn't even know it was Ryless. And I thought, how has one come with him? He was going that good, so just incredible. It just at what point? And this sets up an intriguing proposition. Schwarzier did it under Johnny Murta a few years ago, backed up and ran in the Platinum Jubilee as it will be on Saturday. This guy might well do that, and James McDonald, you'd imagine, would have to ride home affairs, opening the possibility that Jamie Carr, no offence, Haley, but renowned as arguably the best female jockey in the world, could come in for the ride on this guy. Yeah, that, that was the, the plan A, if you like, and if you go back, Ed, it would... means an awful lot to you. Yeah, it means a lot. Like, we don't get a chance to come up and race against the English horse or Irish, French, Americans there were today, even the last few years, Dubai and Hong Kong. So to be able to bring a horse all this way, it's pretty special to be able to not only win, but win the way he did. Yeah, I mean, it was it was breathtaking. It was breathtaking. How would you describe what we just saw out there? Breathtaking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a good display. Just He's a very good horse. He's been it for a long time. I guess he's in the twilight of his career, but he's just learned to be a racehorse now. He was he was tricky horse early on, and he's got better with, with his years. He's matured and um, yeah, it's, a, it's an honour to train a horse like him. I heard in the lead up, and Troy Alaska win for Australia. The question now, I'm sure, going to be asked a lot is, are you going to come back on Saturday and have another crack over a bit further? Uh, well, today, was, look, we'll get him through today. Uh, he's still got jobs to do back in, in Australia, and hopefully he comes through the race well and we can make a decision later in the week, but no decision will be made today. Uh, just fine. I know you've won huge races all over the world, but particularly, obviously, back in Australia. For you, Chris Waller, personally, what does this win mean to you? You. Top five, top five. It's it's just it's it's any win's great. Um, we bunch in yeah. together, don't they? Yeah. And this was of course Nature Strip, and he had to contend with a rideless horse, but he was completely colossal. Yeah. Well, he takes bad luck out of the equation. When yeah. you're riding Nature Strip, you don't need to worry about any runners behind you because he's just he's a juggernaut, isn't he? You get him into his rhythm, and this is what he can do. Uh, he just gave them an absolute toweling up. I'm sure you've seen the vision plenty of times before, but it gets better every time you. Watch. Watch it. He's toying with I them. reckon that's probably Nature Strip's best ever run, best yeah. ever win. You know, like just the way that he pinned him. Nine Group Ones, 18 million, and he's won an Everest as well. Yeah. And he's locked in uh, for Chris Wallace slot this year. Yep. Yeah. And he's just a solid favourite again. Yep. Well, if he runs like that, they won't beat him. Yep. And the, the Prince of Wales is moments away. There by Willie Walsh. Good luck to him on the right in the white shirt. Tony Proctor on the left, followed by State of Rest. For the State of Rest partnership, these familiar colours, MJ Doran leading up, Shane Cross riding for Joseph O'Brien. Eight to one chance. They will go forward on State of Rest. It's just a matter to see will the Japanese take it off them either at the first furlong or from five out. Will it be France? Will it be Japan for the first time? Might it be Ireland or will it be the home team? There's this race in 2020. Slots into stall five. Mile and a quarter, they start on the descent to Swindley Bottom, leaving the stalls and state of rest it is. And Lord North, the blindfold, the blindfold was laid off Lord North and he's given them about half a dozen length start. So a dramatic beginning, the blindfold seemed to be removed late and effectively his race may already have been run as state of rest lead Shariar through the first furlong. Baybridge races in third. He's recovered some of that ground lost at the start, but still, as they pass halfway, is at the back of the pack. State of rest, chain cross still, rather unpestered. Chariar in second, Baybridge in third, no change in the play as yet. Lord North, off this steady pace, has been able to close and gets into fourth place with grand glory as they make the turn for home. State of rest, with Chariar still breathing down his neck. Baybridge poised to angle out off the home bend as the pace just begins to lift. Lord North is now feeling those exertions of having to make up the ground. Japan point with Shariar on the outside of State of Rest for Ireland. Baybridge now the moment of truth up in grey. Lord North is still trying valiantly to stay on but it's State of Rest who has the lead. Shariar beginning to bum under pressure as Baybridge down the outside tries to run down State of Rest. A furlong and a half to go in the Prince of Wales is State of Rest still out in front. Baybridge with over a length to find and State of Rest at the moment is holding Baybridge on the run to the line. State of Rest driven out for 
Shane Cross and a Royal Ascot winner for Joseph O'Brien won the Prince of Wales's under a peach. In second was Baybridge, close for third, Sherry are being closed on by Grand Glory and Lord North finished where he started at the back of the pack. Left alone by the Japanese runner, was able to climb the hill, fill the tank and off the final bend, had enough to repel Baybridge. State of rest, it's been a long wait for Joseph O'Brien as a trainer. He rode winners at Royal Ascot. This is still the wait goes on for Japan. Royal Ascot doesn't quite appear in the calendar at such a convenient place as some of the other overseas meetings they have managed success at. But state of rest waited in front. Had enough to repel Bay Bridge. Fine ride. And watch that. He's obviously thought about coming round here on a big occasion. What about that? Some some resume, isn't it? If you think, uh, you know, a Saratoga Derby, a Cox Plate, and now the Prince of Wales to boot as well. Led up by MJ. Building up towards the Platinum Jubilee, especially for the connections with the two Australian runners. Tom Magnia from Coolmore is one of them. And mate, I imagine there's a little bit of pressure there when uh, when you've got the favourite in the race in, in home affairs. How are you feeling? Uh, we're feeling great. Uh, we're obviously delighted. Uh, all the syndicated victories. This is very competitive. But the overseas challenge looks strong. One is a case of you, Ronan Whelan. Two, Artorias. Mustn't forget the other Australian runner for Anthony and Sam Friedman. Family, of course, who bought Miss Anne takes the ride. 11 is Gustavus Weston, one of the outsiders for Gary Carroll. 12, Happy Power Doesn't Go. 13, Home Affairs for Chris Waller, who trained Nature Strip to win the King's Stand earlier in the week. Furlongs further in the Coronation Stakes, Rob Hornby rides. 20, Campanelle looking to win at the third time at the meeting. The Queen Mary and awarded the Commonwealth Cup last year. 21 is Double or Bubble, Jack Mitchell. 22, Happy Romance, Sean Levy. 23, Highfield Princess, winner of a handicap. At the Platinum Jubilee intensifies because we're only minutes away now. Now, less than seven minutes from the official start, where Home Affairs is your favourite with a sports bet at $2.90. Ahead of Sacred, who has been the big firmer in one of the local sprinters, $9.50 down to $9, down into $7, has been a host of support for Artorius in the past 24 hours, remains very firm at $7.50. And Sacred now at 7 to 1 from 8. Put in between those two is Artorius at 15 to 2. And then Highfield Princess, who's. And Richard. And Artorius, I think, is the last one forward. The Australian runner in stall 2 for Jamie Spencer and the Freedmans. And we're all set for the Platinum Jubilee Stakes. And they're off and racing over the straight six furlongs. Highfield Princess broke well over on the far side. Emirati Anna is up there early, and Campanella moves into that far side group. Home Affairs coming right down the centre in the nose band. And on the right-hand side, Mabel Crown in the white cap with Gustavus Weston. So far side, Campanella leads Emiratiana. I feel Princess. Minzal's over there with Run to Freedom, Double or Bubble. Alcohol free. Meanwhile, Home Affairs leads Naval Crown, Dragon Symbol. Down the near side, Royal Runner Kings Lynn's in the right-hand group with Garrus at the back of it, Great Ambassador. And also towards the back of it at this stage is Bad Dream and a, a Case of You. Over on the far side, Emiratiana leads there from Campanella. Artorius is being pushed along right at the back of that group. I feel Princess King. Ross, Grenadier Guards, the Japanese runner, is staking his claim as well. Down the centre, Home Affairs, far side, Highfield Princess, Emirati Anna, double or bubble, and Grenadier Guards for Japan. Creative forces beginning a challenge as well. Naval Crown on the near side, Home Affairs is done. Artorius is making late ground. Campanella, Highfield Princess, double or bubble, happy romance, Naval Crown, right under the near side rail. Creative force, the far side, Naval Crown, Campanella, and over on the far side, Creative Force. Naval Crown and over on the far side, Creative Force, the 1 2 from the jersey last year. A 1 2 in the Platinum Jubilee, but which way round? Third place, probably Campanella ahead of the running on. Artorius, Naval Crown on the near side, Creative Force on the far side. Naval Crown, I think, is just going to get his revenge here. Naval Crown right under the rail for James Doyle and Charlie Appleby has won by about a head. Creative Force, Artorius and Campanella very close indeed for third or fourth. Naval Crown sported the first colours when he was beaten in the jersey 12 months ago by Creative Force. He has the one... A dead heat for third. I know the Artorias syndicates are absolutely thrilled with the way their horse runs, so... It's like a dead heat between Artorias for Australia and Campanel for Wesley Ward. Let's see here. So, Naval Crown wins, created for second. Very close. Look at this for third. 
Arturis far side, Campanel this side. That's a dead heat for third. Then it's going to be sacred if you had the top five with your bookmaker in first six for you. But it's all about Naval Crown and Godolphin here. A one-two. Creative Force beat Naval Crown in the jersey last year. Naval Crown gets his revenge in the Platinum. And if you missed it this morning, the two Aussies lined up in the Platinum Jubilee. And we'll have a look at it before we go to the boys and to Bernie. Uh, we had Nahoma Affairs who led them up and Artorias. Have a look at him last in the field in Henry Field's Newgate Colours, weaving a passage and to say he was unlucky might be an understatement. Yeah, there's a fair shout, isn't it, Corey? You can see him there yeah. just getting through the middle of the pack and he just gets his momentum balked at a really important time. And we've seen enough of Artorias to know that he's a momentum horse, yeah, isn't he? Yeah. He takes winding up. Yep. Uh, that may have cost him here, but I don't know what happened with Home Affairs. Maybe we'll have to look at the stewards report and hopefully all is well because it was pretty much too bad to be true. Yeah, a few unlucky runners. Oh, that's straight, like... Competitor strip who have put this race in light in recent years. It's a very, very good addition, the 2022 version on paper. Hutch, your top four. Yeah, it's a race that I'll be, you know, you'll be sort of the second, third, fourth out of the race. You'll be happy to follow them going forward. There's some very distinguished sprinters, I think, up and coming. Uh, that is, I think she's good enough passive aggressive, and it's just the relative weight. So. Exciting contest. I'm with Star Patrol on top. I think he's the horse to beat from passive aggressive. March into $2.90 equal favourite with a passive aggressive. Great battle for favouritism at the top as I. I talk to you and now it's three dollars each of two well we this is a race between the top two in the market but Karakazoo Kresic gates are back and away winning verse away okay passive aggressive out fast and gimme pa began very speedily as well star patrol was about the fourth out so winning verse is the leader from gimme pa passive aggressive and they were followed by star patrol who's also in that line 100 meters to go in the Kresic and the leader winning verse from over on the far side I am me star patrol Passive aggressives over on the left, and then came Gimme Pa Pashiro three off the lead from Caracasu, who's niggled out onto the course proper, and Gossettino at the end of the field. 500 to go, winning verse just in front of Star Patrol and Passive Aggressive. Both jockeys yet to show their hand, although Star Patrol's lugging in. Then I am me, Gimme Pa Pashiro comes on from Caracasu, who's darting between horses. Passive Aggressive lets down with Star Patrol at the 250, and the race is on. Passive Aggressive led it three quarters of a Star Patrol, then Karakasu, Gimme Papa Shiro, but the Philly passive aggressive shown the whip. 50 to go from Star Patrol. Passive aggressive will see it out. Passive aggressive unbeaten. Beat Star Patrol, Karakasu, and in fourth place in the race, Pashiro. Then Gimme Pa. Next to finish, I am me, Gossettino, and at the end of the field, winning verse. Four for four and more in store for passive aggressive. Graham Begg's got a beautiful daughter of Fastnet Rock that he can point in pretty much any direction he wants from here. You'd imagine there's the imminent targets perhaps that are on offer for the three olds through the winter, but it might be perhaps a spell and then wait for the spring and what sort of lightly race mare might he have on his hands. Star Patrol perhaps loses no real admirers here with the performance. Look to be perhaps a little bit uncomfortable at stages in the ground and maybe in the position on the track as Matt Hill alluded to in the call was just lucky. <laughs> Starry Legend in the middle, one of the better ones away with Inundation and also Cat Bowl. Lloyd's Crown behind those horses with Fly on by and nice for what then came throw it to Stumps and cooled from Lord Paramount by Frost. Well back Nitchin with that great speed. 600 to go, led by a length and a half Inundation and then came in third Cat Bowl with nice for what and Lloyd's Crown. A couple cooled. Starry Legend on the point of the corner. 350 metres to go from Inundation just inching a little bit closer now and McNeil's about to let it go. Nice for what behind them with Cad Bolt, and then came Cooled and Lloyd's Crown. Squid Game's trying to get through the pack, but Inundations dropped them. 200 metres to go. Let's go. Four links in front from a wall of them. Squid Game getting out, but how smart this Inundation. He's barely touched it and has trounced them. That was big. Squid Game second. Nice for what possibly third from Lloyd's Crown and Cooled, and then by Frost by the field, but we've seen a serious horse. Inundation, that'll get them talking, has put that race away with a blinking of an eye. McNeil hadn't flinched, and in a couple of the gilding by Headwater, that's win three at start number four, 
and has won easily. 2.80 and one inundation. The gelding by Headwater out of Flippity Lass for Mick Price and Michael Kent Jr. with Jai McNeil aboard. Has done it at both ends, showed speed, sat outside the leader and has dropped them. And has won it by about three... <laughs> snap dancer she looks fit as a fiddle Kieran Ma David Eustace and Ethan Brown she's a lovely looking mare and uh, she's stepping up to 1400 meters today she said group one feature the tats tiara over the 1400 meters and here is snap dancer yes so to power at a dollar and 60 cents and nine should be third across the line to race number four well the final group one of the Brisbane winter racing carnival is just about upon us the sky racing tats tiara the first uh, first Contested back. Mr. Gately, Star Tontes, pretty good just behind the placings in the Stradbroke, is your best value player of the day. Yeah, look, it's a terrific race. It always is. And as you expect, a group one level for the girls. And Star Tontes was good, I thought, in the Stradbroke. She just missed... ...milling around and people were having a look. Everybody's pulled out to the track now, though, as you would expect, to have a look at all of these stars go around. And Avisto's the best-backed runner in the race at $5.50. Snap Dancer, not friendless, but not too many, is the second-best-backed runner in the race alongside Star Tontes at $12. And then Kiku and Co. But this is a race with just so much depth. As you can see, 5 bucks 50 the Racing, Shout the Bar began brilliantly. Enchanted Heart the inside. Going forward there is Snap Dancer trapped out and Avisto right up there on the firing line with also Vangelic and Palacipan. Kicker as well. Then we've got next over on the outside, Wanda Bar. Further back to a tissue. Charmy Baby's going forward. Away game, written beauty. Further back to Yamazaki. Bring the rants from the inside. Nudge out three wide, third last. And Star Tonte is second last. The inside last of all is Brooklyn Hustle. So it's Anna Visto with the lead. Second snap dancer. Third Palacipan. Three or four lengths further back to Vangelic the inside. And then we've got also Kiku as they swing down to the side. And then we've got Charmy Baby. Away game. Wanda Bar. Shout the bar. Written beauty. A tissue. Bring the ransom. Yamazaki further back on the field to Enchanted Heart the inside. A nudge a long way back. Star Tonte's second last from Brooklyn Hustle. Last at the 450. And Last at the 450, Anna Visto from second snap dancer. Charmy Baby's been wide. Railing throws Palacipan further back in the field there to Kiku. Away game down the outside, but snap dancer took over and broke away. Palacipan's making ground. Further back to Charmy Baby, Kiku. Away game, but snap dancers with the lead here. Palacipan trying hard. Star Tontes is flashing home late. Star Tontes and snap dancer. Star Tontes has won. Star Tontes from snap dancer. Palacipan, a tissue away game followed by Kiku Charmy Baby Nudge and Ritty Nudge and Written Beauty Shout the Bar Wanda Bar Brooklyn Hustle Vangelic followed for the back by Yamazaki and Avisto Enchanted Heart and bring the ransom pulled up at the rear the tiny little three-year-old filly, Star Tontes, has finally cracked it for another win. She hadn't won one since September of last year. But all of her runs have been terrific, both in Sydney and back here in Brisbane. And that's the one they wanted with Star Tontes today. Has backed up the big win last start with a brave third. I think a tissue might get fourth, Maxi. It's a close photo there, but what about the ride? Jason Collett from last to first. Yeah, well, there's only one way to ride this girl, and that's back in the field because she's got but no special for a long way through. And uh, she went that close in the surround in Sydney. She'd had no luck. We made a big call, taking Taylor off and putting Jason on. But he was Gator, David Gately, you tipped her as your best each way bet Australia wide today. And I sent that out to all my owners and clients, your champion. What to do with her now? Told the tale there. As I say, nothing of her, and to come from last and weave a passage was quite phenomenal. You're right, she is tiny. Her nickname is Pumpkin. She is clearly the, you know, the smallest horse in that race, and she'd come through some horses like the Fred Best and the Stradbroke. In fact, if you watched her Stradbroke run, she found the line equally as good as she did yesterday, but obviously it was a bit better company. But I don't know...
for um, Snap Dancer Present at the top of the straight. Um, but she has failed to run out 1,400 uh, strongly previously. Palayapan, what a ride by Luke Tarrant to get from the gate, third the fence. And now she gets Group 1 uh, placing status, which is just terrific for her uh, heading towards uh, the breeding barn. But, you know, she gives them all a start. Admittedly, she gets this most glorious run, uninterrupted run, uh, shows the best turn of foot, gives them a start, beats them all fair and square. A tissue was great late. Um, and as I said, snap dancer hanging on. Anna Visto, I guess, was the flop. She was the favourite. Rachel King of the opinion. She just... The winter championship for Penfolds 2022. They're ready. Signal and they're racing. And Sir Davy from barrier number one was one of the better ones away. Mystery shot closer today is firing towards the lead with also Paul's regret and Sosi Bonner's charging over. And looks like Elvis is a lot closer and Tuvalu from that outside drawer is joining in. So as they complete the first two or three hundred metres of the race, it looks like Elvis with Tuvalu out three wide steadily works up to take the lead from Sosi Bon and then Serpentine. Two lengths to high strength partner Luna Flair. Mohican Heights is last of the 15 as they run around the corner. 600 metres to go. It's Tuvalu just in front of Looks Like Elvis. As the leader left the fence deliberately, about three or four horses off, there's a run big enough for a Mack truck for Sosie Bon, and then mystery shot high stranger. Serpentine wax away. Paul's regrets Sir Davies trying to push it into the clear then Edison. Tuvalu the leader. 300 metres to go by a length and a half. Sosie Bon, mystery shot high stranger, then Sir Davy and further back Paul's regret but still Tuvalu, 150 50 metres to go, three lengths in front of Sir Davy out late chasing, but Tuvalu is clear, and Tuvalu won the Winter Championship from Sir Davy. mystery shot. Luna Flair up for four, then Frankie Pino and winning partner from Edison Dor this uh, gelding by Kermadec wins seven at start number 11, and it's been placed on four other occasions. He did, look, he's a lovely... <laughs> One contest, the British Champions Series as well for the Sprint Division. Number one is Artorias for Jamie Spence, the third strong finishing. Allah bless him. At uh, Ascot, he comes from the back, gets out paced like a good pace to run at. Two black rod knots for Japan and Yoshito Yahagi, who has travelled around the world with lots of success. Oruse Osaki is in the saddle. Oruse Osaki is in the saddle. 13 perfect power. Christoph Simeon struck up such great association with Richard by his sprinter and 14 twice for the Dali July Cup. Let's see some horses with Sally Ann. Oh, Twilight. The air in the middle. And they're off. And racing Artorias, as expected, drops out the back early on. Twilight Jet stand side shows early pace as they race through the first pearl and with Flaming Rib over on the far side. Well, a string speed by Naval Crown, who's right up there with Emirati Anna. Also in the four is King Hermes, and they are the first five. Creative Force over on the far side with Alcohol Free. They are burning along towards the back on the near side. Double or Bubble in company with Happy Romance. Artorias is managing to stay in closer touch. Red and yellow colours just hustled along with Cadamosto. Romantic Proposal is towards the back of the field, and Perfect Power is last of all at this stage as they make their way down towards halfway. Naval Crown, Emirati Anna and Twilight Jet across the course. Flaming Rib being pushed along. Creative Force getting on the back of his stable companion. Artorias trying to improve. Cadamosto romantic proposal. He's trying to make ground perfect power. He's going to have to close strongly, beginning to make some progress. Changing course. Out in front, Naval Crown. Out the hole free and Creative Force is back in third place. Perfect Power staying on. Naval Crown and Alcohol free over on the far side. It is Alcohol free. Rob Hornby again. Successive. Native Crown, Naval Crown in second place, third for Artorias, and Perfect Power never got involved. Well, alcohol free, she bounces back. There are times when her career appears at a crossroads and she has gone forward again. And what a week for Rob Hornby. Back to back Group 1 successes. Naval Crown in second showed blistering speed. Third there for Artorias, fourth for Creative Force. If we roll it on, you'll see Perfect Power, who just seemed to lack that kick today in seventh place. Gave them a start and couldn't reel them in. Then happy romance. Alcohol free for Jeff Smith. 
1984, I think it was, that Chief Singer won, trained by Ron Shee, the Pun Shee, the partner by Ray Cochran. Many years later, Rob Hornby gives Jeff Smith.